Hey y'all, Justin with Kayak Catfish. Well, I'm on the river on a cold day here in East Tennessee, but I'm gonna bring you all along for some catfish. And I've just got my lines baited here and about to drop them down. And I'm gonna bring you all with me today, just raw and uncut, unedited. You're gonna see everything that I catch out here this afternoon. Everything start to finish. Y'all gonna see it. So let's get, get the lines in here. If I get my words out, Lord Almighty, we're starting out this video with a bang here. Can't get my words going i'm gonna show you my baits as i drop them down so this first bait is a piece of skipjack i've got that on a dragging rig it's my dragon sinkers right there i'm just gonna let that go down there let out some line while we get the other bait over here right now we're gonna move up this ledge we're gonna work up through here real slow today 0 0.3 0 0.4 miles an hour this bait here is going to be a little bit smaller that is a piece of drum i got a drum there on the last trip and so i've took a just a fillet a small fillet of him same setup dragging we'll let out some line on that now those are going to be my two rods there that we're kind of focusing on larger catfish as we work up this ledge i'm hoping we come across some uh maybe down in the mud we bring them dragging baits by them they either snatch a skipjack, snatch the drum, et cetera, et cetera. But while we're pulling them along, I'm also going to have a couple other rods out with suspended baits. And these are going to be lighter tackle setups. These are basically my skipjack rods, my bait rods, but I've got pieces of chicken on smaller hooks with a crappie jig below it. So I'm going to drop those down and keep them just off the bottom as we work up through here and just try to try to get us some action, you know, pick off some smaller fish. And in addition to these, got one more thing here behind me, y'all. I got a, a jig. I'm going to have the live scope on as we make our way up this ledge. And I'm going to be looking on that screen. And if we come across any fish that are up in the water column that I can drop a jig down to we're gonna to try to pick those off too got a couple of those yesterday man that's a good time on that lighter tackle on them jig when they bust an artificial it's fun so anyway i gotta quit flapping my gums here y'all we gotta let's slow our speed down just a just a hair and let's drop our chicken nuggets down here our raw chicken nuggets but today's trip it's going to be a short one for me, which is why I thought I'll just do another unedited video because it's about 1.30 right now. And, you know, it gets dark early today. Well, this time of year, I mean, about 5.30, it's dark. And with it being as cold as it is out here today, I for sure ain't going to be staying out here probably be out of here before sunset truth be told just being 100 percent honest with you so i thought since we're having a short trip today i'm just gonna bring y'all with me for the whole ride so i come down here i launched upstream from here come down and we're gonna drag up river back toward the launch and as soon as this bait gets down here i'm gonna well, apparently I'm going to get my line wrapped around my rod tip, so I'm going to do. Bear with me a second there. There we go. We get these front baits set. We're going to click the bells over on our dragon rods. That should be enough line out on them. I can't tell if I'm on bottom or not. My dang, my braid on this reel here is in bad shape. I need to switch that out. Y'all add that to my to-do list for me there anyway we'll put that there right now we're 66 feet depth is going to it's going to get shallower as we make our way upstream so we'll have to adjust our baits to compensate for that we got our rods on the back here switched over so again i'm just gonna keep my eye on the live scope as we go up through here we see something that looks interesting uh don't matter if it's a catfish or not if i can get a jig in front of it we may get a chance at, at enticing it to bite and we're in for a good time if we do so come with me today y'all we're gonna try catching fish we'll talk about life solve the world's problems have us a, a good old time out here at least that's what i'm trying to try to stay warm is what i really need to do man it is 
I hope wherever you're watching this video at, I hope it's warm wherever you're at. It's supposed to be a high of 43 today, but it's cloudy and the sun ain't never come out. So I don't know if we're going to hit 43 today. It's, it's kind of a, I don't even know how you describe it, like a, a damp kind of cold too. Anytime it's damp, it always makes it feel colder than it is. So I'm going to try to catch some fish quick out here this afternoon. I waited the house as long as I could, hoping that sun would come out and maybe warm it up a little bit. But I was like, well, that's as good as it's going to get today. So we're going to have to get after it. Tomorrow's going to be a little warmer, but the wind's supposed to be up tomorrow. So that'll probably knock me out of going. I'm seeing some stuff here on the screen. Let me, come on, get the camera up here. Let me adjust this gain up here. That I think's a fish. This down here below it, I believe is some bait. Come on, I'm gonna throw with that fish right there. Let me just give him a toss. He's about 30 feet away. Let's see how. Oh, I'm off. I need to go. I need to go further than that. I don't know if we're going to get a chance at this one or not because I'm moving and he's moving and. Yeah, I ain't gonna get there. He's went. He's went on down further. He's still away from me. I've got that motor right now. I've got it going on course heading, so it's kind of just following a path up through here. So we're just gonna keep an eye out as we move along and see if we can get something. I managed yesterday. I I managed to get two on the jig in addition to the other fish I caught just with the normal methods. I was suspending four baits yesterday and I was on down river in a, in a creek and I caught some fish in there. I mean, I had a, I had a good afternoon. Uh, those of y'all regular viewers should have seen that video before this one, obviously, but, but, uh, I just didn't, I didn't see a lot of that. I didn't see any big schools of bait in that creek. So I thought maybe, Maybe the weather we've had lately, maybe it's kind of pulled things out. And I just wanted to try an area here on the main channel and see what was going on. It'll either work out or it won't, but if you're seeing this video, that's a pretty good inkling that we got something today because I sure wouldn't be posting those skunk video, especially if it's a video that's going to be three plus hours long. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that to you, as I promise. So, uh, yeah, y'all. We're just going to have some fun today. Make our way up through here. Hopefully, hopefully catch us a big one. I'm curious to see what we get on that drum. Yesterday, I, I was using these lighter tackle rigs with the chicken and the crappie jig. And I got a drum on a crappie jig. And so I kept him and threw him in the cooler. And he was a little too big. I don't really like using drum that's that big because they, they the bigger they are the harder they are to cut you got to cut through all them ribs and it's it's an ordeal so that's why i just took some fillets off of it but uh we got them i cut up a few more fillets too so i won't have to fool with that while we're while we're trying to film and, <laughs> and everything so uh yeah we'll use that uh, drum on one rod back here i had half of a skipjack left over from yesterday so we got one chunk there obviously and i probably got one or two more baits of the skipjack we can use and then i've got some yellow bass in the cooler too we can go to that if need be but if we get to that point then we're having us a good day so it's a good problem to have but the chicken yesterday caught some fish you know got us some action the crappie jig caught a few fish i got a uh, got that drum and i got the yellow bass and i got a white bass on the crappie jig too so I don't know how much action, how much activity is going to be going on out here in the main channel, but be uh, be a good time to good time to find out. 
No time like the present, right? These dragon rigs behind me, I've not got them very far back. And I'm just moving. I'm moving so slow, my speed's not even registering. I, I want it today. You know, our water temps are down in the 40s now, so I want to be like 0 0.3, 0 0.4 miles an hour. And we're going to have to tinker with the speed just to be able to... We obviously need to be able to move fast enough to cover some water, but we don't want to move so fast that we're not going to trigger a bite from a from a inactive fish. There's something we're coming up on here. He's about 50 feet out there. We'll see when we get a little closer. We'll spin that transducer around a little bit. The perfect scenario for throwing this jig is to throw off the front of the kayak here on the left between this rod and the kayak. I got this little window here. I can toss that jig out. So that's the perfect place to, to have a fish. So that's really kind of where I want to keep that transducer. I'm going to leave y'all camera in the chest. The video I filmed yesterday was my first ever video being filmed where it was an unedited catfish trip. Now, I've done some unedited ultralight trips and when I'd polled the audience in the past on those, everybody seemed to prefer the chest cam versus having the camera up front. But uh, we'll see what people say about uh, the catfish video from yesterday, but obviously I don't I don't have the results back from that yet from people commenting and letting me know what they like. So we're going to go with this for now. And I'm going to sit here and set on my hands and try to warm them up a little bit. I need me a coat on is what I need, but I think I talked about that in yesterday's video. Uh, I, I'm at a point in my life where I feel like if I, if I got to wear a coat, I'm going to be cold anyway. And it just restricts your movement so much. It's just cumbersome to wear a big, a big winter coat, especially when you're in a kayak and a cramped space and trying to fish. So I'm just going to whine and suffer out here today. <laughs> y'all going to have to just listen to me. Wherever y'all are at, I, yeah, I hope it's warm. Hopefully you got a heater on somewhere. I'd like to be down down south in Florida right now is where I'd like to be. Catching some sharks down there in the Keys. I bet it's 80 degrees down there today while we up here suffering in Tennessee. I had a, I had a dang good time when I went down there a few weeks ago. I had a that vacation I went down there on Thanksgiving week. And I caught some sharks and I stopped off, stopped off before I went to the Keys and got some peacock bass and some uh, then big copper nose bluegill. And I had a good time down there. It was a real good time. Just one of them places, oh uh, boy, you gotta, you gotta have some, some high income to stay down there long. Cause boy, it's an expensive place to, to vacation. Everything's more expensive down there. The the housing situation, I had rented somebody's timeshare. So I got a deal on it, but everything else, you know, your your food down there, expensive. Anything you want to do is expensive. I went down to Key West and played tourist one day. We got a fish right here. We got a fish. I think we got a fish on that drum. We hooked up on the drum. That small piece of drum right there is dragging. Well, that didn't take long, folks. Where are we at on the video here? We ain't, I mean, we ain't, we ain't been moving far at all. That's encouraging, buddy. I'm glad y'all brought your lucky rabbit's foot or good luck charm, whatever you, whatever you use for good luck. I'm glad you brought it with us today. So I gotta get this front rod here out of my way. There we go. Yeah, I've got that motor. 
on the course heading so as the fish pulls us backwards it'll eventually get a spun spun around right and going the, the right way keep us on our course so we don't get everything all cattywampus i'm gonna stand up a second i got i'm getting old y'all it's getting a cramp in my hip right there <laughs> i gotta stand up stretch that out you know you're getting old when you get a cramp in your hip from just sitting down all right we got us a skunk buster here he's gonna give us the bait back too that's nice of him come over here before you throw that bait off you can go ahead and throw that hook if you want to now that we got a look at you keep me from getting my hands wet come here fish oh no uh-uh Come on in, then, why don't you? All right, we got our bait back. There he is, just a small blue cap. You can see he's got mud on him right there. He got mud. He's got it all up his head. He's been kind of buried in it down there. Get on out of here, fish. Okay. Let's make sure we're still hooked good. Still looks good. I mean, that right there, it ain't a, it ain't a very big bait, but this time of year, yesterday I got a, the best fish from yesterday was on a big skipjack head. But oftentimes in the winter months, when you get water temps down in the 40s, I oftentimes do better on smaller baits, so. We've got that bigger chunk of skipjack over there, but I just, this time of year, I want to have some small baits out too. Of course, we got our chicken on these front rods, but, and that'll catch us some fish most likely. But it's, it's more small fish I anticipate getting with the chicken versus big trophy class fish, although anything's possible. I mean, I know a lot of you out there are big believers in the chicken. I mainly just wanted to, yesterday and today, doing these unedited videos, I just wanted to have them out to make sure we get some extra action from them smaller fish that we wouldn't normally be able to hook up on on a, on a bigger bait or a bigger hook. I'm just going to let out just a little bit more line here. I'm not running these things very far behind me, as deep as we are and as calm as the water is today don't need them super far behind us all right well y'all he wasn't very big but that'll bust the skunk out any day by gosh we're on the board just a few minutes into the trip need something bigger than that warm me up though that fish right there didn't make me forget about wanting to be back down in the Keys right now. <laughs> Wouldn't mind being in the Keys, but I don't want no more cheeseburgers in paradise. I was down there, you know, I went down and, and spent a day in Key West just playing tourist on a day where it was real windy. And, you know, don't get me wrong, Key West is, it's a nice place. It's worth going to at least once. But, I mean, just everything. I mean, first, it costs $40 to park down there. And you're walking all over. And I ended up going to the Margaritaville, Jimmy Buffett's restaurant. His, it was apparently the first Margaritaville. And I thought, you know, well, this is a, a touristy type thing. You know, you, you only live once. I'm going here and get me a cheeseburger in paradise. And it was probably one of the worst burgers I've had. I mean, I've had better hamburgers at fast food restaurants than that burger in there. So kind of got gypped on that. It was beautiful down there though, but not really too expensive for me and not really my kind of people. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not my scene down there. But I wouldn't mind some of that warm tropical weather. 
it'll be very welcomed right now I'm gonna check these front lines again these these lighter tackle rods with the chicken on them I've got a small sinker two ounce sinker and with us trolling here we're, the current is barely noticeable today it's i mean they're not hardly moving any water at all but because we're going into the current and we're fishing so deep the baits are getting pulled back up in the water so we're going to have to kind of we're going to have to kind of play the angle and make sure we keep our baits down there in the strike zone as we move along got to kind of compensate for the fact your baits are getting pushed up in the water column My other baits back there, well, my sinkers anyway, they're dragging bottom. But you don't want these chicken nugget rigs here with the exposed hook. You don't want them dragging bottom. You'll be snagged up. Right here's this one. Throw that with the jig. Okay, there goes my jig. Will he stay close by? We've got two of them there, actually. I've lost sight of him now. Where'd he go? Damn it. I'm gonna pull my bait up here. Here's my jig. Right there. I can't tell if that's a real fish or if that's a I think that's a real fish. But he's behind me. I was hoping my, I was hoping he'd swim forward. He ain't gonna do it. I don't know where that other fish went. Gave it the effort there, folks. We we gave it the college try. Ideally, need these fish to be about twenty feet or less away and ideally be right here in this this window that I can easily toss to it's asking a lot I know but when it works out it's magic Betty it is fun times a bigger mark over here to my left but I'll never hit him that far out and with us moving It is encouraging to see some life, though. It's kind of what I was... It's what I was hoping for coming out here because I didn't see as much in that creek yesterday as what I had hoped. Just as far as the bait schools and stuff, I thought there may be something going on in the channel. We'll see. Even if we get a big in day, I don't know this could be worth it to me because I'm cold. We're a few minutes in this video, y'all already tired of hearing me whine. I just I I so much rather deal with heat than cold. You know, the summer months, the summer months here in East Tennessee is very humid, and you're kind of limited during those midday hours just because it's so miserable hot but i can avoid the heat by just fishing early mornings you know i'll get out fish from sunrise till 10 or 11 and have me a good time and then be off the water before it gets super hot There's a small fish going by right there up higher in the column water column There's one right out there. We got one under us, and there's one out there about 20, 25 feet. Well, my jig ain't going to hit the one I was going for, but it's heading toward the other one right there. Boy, I'm going to hit him with it. That may have been two small fish, actually, instead of one big one. lower down see if I can see that other one well, I've lost sight of everything now the fish and the jig I 
There's something a little bigger there. About 30 feet out. Where'd you go, fish? I think he's that way. I swing and miss a lot with this dropping a jig down. I mean, it's a, my batting percentage, I ain't making no Hall of Fame, I'll tell you that. I ain't no Ted Williams of live scoping. Well, that one is just sitting out there. He's about 25 feet out. Okay, I'm gonna miss him. I've missed him. Did not get his attention. Mm. Well, fiddlesticks. It's fun when it happens, though. You just have to take my word for it. I'll prove it to you. At some point today, maybe, hopefully. I don't know. I, you know, when you see fish up like that in the water column, I don't know what they are. That one there, I mean, he's 35 feet out and about 40 feet deep. And he's just sitting there. If he continues to sit there as we move our way along, I may get a shot at him. Get this one down here to this one. Misting. Boy, he's just sitting there too. <laughs> he's just he's just sitting there. I'm gonna be by I'm gonna be passed by him here. Nah, hell, I don't even see my, okay, there's my jig. This one's got a chance, folks. This one's got a chance. I know I'm, let me turn the camera here and see if we can, oh, he's chasing it, he's chasing it. No, he swam off, I spooked him. You see, he, he went that way, he spooked him. I got close to him. They thought he was coming after it. I didn't want to catch that in no way. We'll show that fish. It ain't going to make him famous on this video. That little one that ate the drum there a little while ago. We'll make him famous though. Speaking of famous, when I got back from my Florida Keys trip, I finally got to go see Winona in concert, Winona Judd. She come to Knoxville there. That's a pretty good show. I'm not I'm not entirely certain what was going on with her. I don't know if she's got a some kind of ailment that that limits her mobility. Or if she was just high as a kite. It, it could go either way, but either way, intoxicated or not, she still got a, a good voice. She can still sing. So she put on a good show. I had a interesting experience with this girl by, beside me. There was this group of girls. That, they all had t-shirts, Winona t-shirts on. Not like t-shirts that you would that you would buy at a concert, but like homemade t-shirts that said Winona and it had their favorite song or whatever on there. And they were super into the show. I mean, like they were standing up and singing and dancing in the aisle and stuff. I mean, like they were into it. We got a fish right here. He's after it. Has he still got it? Yep. We got one. 
This is on the skipjack this time. Let's get this fish up here and I'll finish telling you about this girl at the Winona concert. She was something. That girl at the Winona concert is definitely going to be bigger than this fish. <laughs> I can tell you that. I don't care how big this fish is. It, it, it ain't got a chance at being bigger than the girl at, at Winona's concert. He, he's pulling with everything he's got, though. I give him credit. Well, that's two dragging, nothing on the chicken. Not one dang fish on the chicken so far. I, I would have thought we'd get our most fish on the, you know, the chicken and then better quality on these rods. That's kind of what I was thinking. Well, they're getting close here. Yeah, that's about... That's about the same size as that last one there. Just a small dinkity doodah, but it's another bite. Come over here, fish. Let me get this rod out of the way, and hell, I might bring you in and get you unhooked. That jig pole gets in the way. Don't it, fish? Nah, uh hey. Hey, act like somebody. Act like you've been on a video before. You may have, for all I know. Well, this fish right here is probably old enough that I've put a bait in front of him before at some point. He's got mud all over him, too. These fish have been... With all this cold weather we've had, these fronts that have come through, I'd say it here recently, they've been buried down in that mud. rehook this bait it's still no longer than it's been out there nothing had hit it before that fish i think we're i think we're good don't let me forget to flip that bail over in a minute that's your all's one job right now don't let me forget flip that bail back Deucer spun back around there. But, uh, yeah, y'all, anyway, so I got these group of girls to my left that's there to see Winona. They had apparently drove up from Chattanooga and had apparently been uh, getting their snoots full the whole way, if you know what I mean. They were, they were lit by the time they got to the show. <laughs> and, uh, they were dancing and singing, carrying on in the aisles and stuff. And the girl that was on the end of their group that was sitting next to me, she she was a larger girl, if you know what I mean. And you know, nothing wrong with that. But when she would sit down, it's like she expanded. Like she sits down and then, you know, thighs and butt and stuff expand and it was coming over into my seat it was it was kind of awkward and uh she mentioned something about it at one point she's like i hope it's not bothering you and i'm like well what can you say in that situation you know i'm like oh it's fine she's like, is it really fine or are you sure i'm like it's fine <laughs> it's it's okay it was weird but yeah nevertheless i got to see why nona she puts on a good show y'all you get a chance to go see her I recommend it. Tickets weren't bad. It was like 30 something dollars, I think. So it was it was affordable to go. I ate at a place up there called What was that place I called? It was in Market Square. Not Watson's, I think it's called. And it was a uh, they had some good burgers in there. I don't go up to that part of Knoxville very often. I just don't, ain't my, ain't my vibe up there, you know? Here's what I'm gonna do right now though. We're gonna, 
we're gonna put the speed control on this kayak because every time the wind and the wind ain't bad today but every time it kicks up a little bit it's messing with our speed here i want to get us dialed in to about 0.3 We're not going to cover, we're going to cover water out here this afternoon, but we're not going to cover a ton of water. I want to be moving, but I want to be moving slow. And Mother Nature don't give a crap. What I need from the wind is to either be consistently blowing at one speed or don't blow at all this blowing and then stopping and blowing and stopping it makes it hard to control things we're gonna get it dialed in though when you push this on these motor guides here when you push that speed control button when you're in the course heading feature it sets your speed at one mile an hour and then every time you hit the plus or minus it goes at 0.1 mile an hour 0.1 mile an hour increments and so we got it hopefully around 0.3 ish right now and and what it should do ideally is if the wind picks up a little bit it'll move us faster to hold us at that speed if the wind dies down it'll back off so that we you know so that we maintain it let me flip that bell over since y'all forgot to tell me about it we'll sit back on my hands my that fish handling that fish there got my hands all cold again i ain't seeing a lot on that screen right now though i mean it's just we had that school of bait there earlier and seeing the occasional fish up but i'm not seeing big concentrations of fish that's all right we'll come across them eventually they're obviously there with you know, when they're down in that mud you're not going to see them on live scope i mean you got to have some you got to have some distance between the bottom and the fish before they're going to show up if they're on bottom down in that mud or if they're just kind of swimming along the bottom like real close to it you just ain't going to see them on there but them baits back there that's dragging they're moving along they're kind of them dragon sinkers are stirring up that mud and it kind of simulates a, a catfish or a carp that's feeding in the mud. And then when you bring that bait by a fish, you just sometimes you get a reaction strike from it too. So we're going we're gonna to go with the dragon. Now, yesterday I was suspending my bigger baits, today we're dragging. And so far, two bites we got. Both been on the dragon. Can't believe the chicken ain't even been touched. I hope you don't hear that rattle up there with my motor. Well, it quits now that I mention it. It's got like a vibration at certain speeds. <laughs> It'll drive you, drive you nuts if you hear it. Another thing that you might be hearing this is another reason today where I wanted to do another unedited video. I'd mentioned yesterday that there's a school of bait that's up and there's a fish behind it too, about 40 feet in front of us. We'll see if he sits there as we move along. I may throw it. I may go ahead and throw at him now. Let's see if we can get a cast at him. my jig down we're gonna have a chance at this one I don't know if you can see that or not but my jig is headed down it's gonna land real close to him we got a chance at this one if he sees it I've lost sight of the fish in my jig now there's my jig it's come back on the screen I don't see the fish with that boy we got close to that one that was real close. I don't know if that there's a fish or if that's bait. Let's throw at it and just find out. Oh, oh. 
We got we got one after the chicken right there. I'm gonna. I've missed that fish. I've missed him. Let's see if we got to. Let's see if we got this one still on. I think he's let it go. Yeah, he's let that go. Let's see if he got her bait. He may have hit the crappie jig or something. Who knows what it was. Bait's still on there. That chicken's looking kind of rough. Let's put us another piece of chicken on there. We'll switch that out. It's getting baited up. I just left all this chicken out of the cooler because it's so dang cold. It's probably colder setting out than it is in the cooler. I'm just taking a chunk of this chicken and plain chicken breast. It ain't got no garlic powder, no Kool-Aid, none of that nonsense. Just plain, plain chicken breast. And this is a, I believe it's number six, six size hook circle hook and I've got a crappie jig under it a few inches there and so fish that are too small to eat our normal baits they'll sit there and nip at them peck at them and stuff they can actually eat that bait and that hook so we'll send it back down there and Try to compensate for the angle, get it raised up off bottom. Is that rattle? I hope that rattle ain't picking up on the microphone. All I was trying to say before those fish interrupted us is that um, another reason today for doing an unedited video is I'm trying out a little something. I've got my fancy microphone not plugged into my camera, but I got it on me. I'm going to try to. I'm going to try to merge the audio with the video, assuming that this thing is actually recording, and see how that goes. So that was another another reason I wanted to experiment a little bit today. You know, I, ain't, I know I do this YouTube crap, and people think you know what you're doing, but the fact is, all this technical editing mumbo-jumbo stuff, I know very little. I know just enough to get by, basically. <laughs> but if it can be done, I'm going to figure it out. And I'm sure it can be. So if the audio on this video today is better than normal, well, it's because I figured it out. And if it doesn't sound very good today, well, either this microphone's not recording like I had hoped or something went wrong in the editing process could go either way got my hands cold again I'm just gonna leave that transducer there ain't really no point in shining it left and right because I when I'm seeing them fish over the left I can't with us moving and that jig I just can't I'm not gonna hit them I need them to be kind of in front of us here to have a chance so I'm just going to leave it pointing in the direction that I need to cast to because that that live scope beam is so narrow. It starts out really narrow and then slowly gets wider. So you kind of got to hit a small area to be able to hit the target that you're looking at. This right here is our best our best lane to be able to cast and not get stuff tangled up that's part of it too with these other lines out you fish four lines in a kayak you're begging for a tangle as it is you you add in a fifth one that you're trying to cast it's it's a matter of time uh, this creek up here that i launched in 
I didn't have the transducer in the water when I come out of there because it slows the kayak down so much, but but I wasn't seeing anything. Like I, at the back of it there, I wasn't seeing no shad. I wasn't seeing no birds. With it being a cloudy day, I, uh, I would assume the water temperature back there is probably colder than it is back here because those shallower waters are going to cool off quicker and it's the air temperature right now is colder than the water temperature so i would say i would say if there's any bait in that particular creek it's probably out toward the deeper water toward the entrance of it or those fish are out in the channel here somewhere we're still 64 feet right now it's gonna there's a fish. There's one on the light tackle. Come on up here, fish. I don't know what he is. I don't know if he's... I think he may have come off unless he's a... No, he's come off. Teased us. It's like either he's really small or he's come off. As another one, we didn't want to catch no way. He had just got my hands wet and made me colder. As we make our way up here, shallower, once we get, the shallower we get, the less difficult it will be to suspend these baits with the lighter sinkers. I don't want to put heavier sinkers on there. Yesterday I had a four ounce on one and two ounce on the other. I don't know that it made a difference, but the fish kept biting on the rig with the two ounce sinker versus the four. So, and the, and the rod, these rods are so light that four ounce had it setting over anyway so i'm gonna leave the two on but as we get shallower that right there was on bottom i need to adjust that let's reel this up and see what our chicken looks like and then we switch it out too but as we get shallower it'll be the lesser water resistance on the amount of line you got out it won't be up in the water column as much be easier to control our depth we picked up some weeds right there. Picked up something, didn't we? Yeah, let's go ahead and, while we got it up here, let's just go ahead and put a fresh piece of chicken on. Oh, chicken, Mc, raw chicken McNuggets here. Actually, I don't think chicken mcnuggets are real chicken i think they're seems like i'd read something once upon a time about chicken mcnuggets they're chicken byproducts or something or chicken flavored so i don't know i don't remember i don't eat chicken mcnuggets very often i don't eat any kind of chicken nuggets very often to be honest with you i like them chick-fil-a chicken nuggets but, you know, I'm a growing young boy, and it takes me a lot of them small Chick-fil-A nuggets to fill up. And, well, if any of y'all been to Chick-fil-A lately, you know it's ain't the cheapest place to go. If I got to buy two combo meals to get filled up, that's $20. So I can go get a, I can go get a nice piece of chicken somewhere at a, sit down restaurant for the same price so i can get me some chicken nuggets because so that's usually what i do got a boat coming i didn't think we'd see a boat today it's funny how all them them hardcore lake life people they disappear this time of year <laughs> they ain't nowhere to be found
got us some fresh chicken on. I think we got us a fish here about to hit this back rod too on that drum. He may have it actually. He does have it. We got us another one on the drum. That boat going by, he's missed the show here. He needs to turn around and come back. This may be the only fish he sees today. On the drum. On the drum doing us right. I thought I might get some more of them today too, possibly. Them crappie jigs down there on the chicken baits. They may hit the chicken too. Them drums got a small mouth for the size of their body. Yeah, that's another dinkity doodah here. What do you think, fish? You want to come on in? He's another one, though. You can tell he's got mud everywhere on him there. He's got that hook. Look where that hook's at. It's coming out the bottom lip there. You tried to stick me with that hook, didn't you, fish? I uh, know you did. I'm on to your games, buddy. Yo, yo, dinkity doo dah. That mud man all up his back. That drum, it's a tough bait. I'm gonna send it back down. Got the dragon sinker on a three way. That's 80 pound monofilament, about three foot or so length line, length of the line. Got a three inch peg float and a rattle down to that 10 ounce size hook. We'll let out some line there. Y'all holler when it's time for me to flip that bell over. I wash the slime off my hand. My hand, I just, every time I start to get them warmed up a little bit, we get them wet again. That's three fish all on the dragon. Interesting. I'm gonna raise these up a little more, I think. We're 61 feet now. Keep making our way on up. Yeah, these unedited videos, y'all, I don't know how they're going to be received the ultralight ones people really seem to enjoy their my best viewed videos on my channel in the past year but those ultralight videos there's a lot of action i mean you first off you're catching a lot of fish when you're ultralight fishing but you're also along the shoreline you're making casts you know stuff you're doing stuff constantly with catfishing there's a lot of sitting and waiting. I mean, even even right now, while we're we're trolling, we're actively moving. I'm gonna throw it that down there. Is still we're still just kind of barely moving along, you know. So I don't know from a viewing perspective how it's gonna be for y'all, but we're gonna try it. I'm missing that fish, buddy. It's coming right back toward me. I missed him by 10 foot. Now I don't see him anymore. Oh, oh, I see that fish though, my gosh. We got one on the skipjack. Come on, fish. Okay, now, fish number four. Where are we at? We're not even an hour into the video. I already got four fish. tell if that was fish was rolling or if that was head shakes let's see let me get him up here so two on the drum two on the skipjack no matter me what to eat i just want to catch them i'll come out here and suffer through these temperatures by gosh i want to catch some fish I got one. 
thought I heard my other rod back there getting pulled on, but I guess I wasn't. I was imagining things. You know what? You know what I was hearing my dang line out there. Y'all forgot to tell me to flip my bell back over. Dog onions. I can't depend onions for nothing. I guess that line over on the other side will be running out of ways. You'll be farther behind. It don't matter. I think this one maybe a little bigger than the last one. He's still a dink though. He fought a little harder at least than the other. Oh, oh, let's leave him setting. We got one right here now. We doubled. We'll leave him setting. We'll get his friend here on the chicken. Or the crappie jig one, whatever he's eating. Business just picked up all of a sudden here, folks. Business picked up, as Jim Ross would say, back in the stone cold Steve Austin days. We're going to stomp a mud hole and walk it dry in these fish by gosh it's fun on these light tackle man even these smaller fish on the on my bait rods these are just medium heavy bass rods but these smaller cats assuming this is a cat yep it is they'll put up a a good fight on this tackle come over here let's get you going first before we get our i tell you what no let's not do that let's leave him setting we'll land the dragging fish and we'll start letting out our line on it while we're fooling with the other one and then maybe y'all can remember to tell me to flip the bell over on this one i ain't confident after the last after the last time but We'll see. I'm going to give you another chance here. Hey, fish, give me that bait, would you? Give me that bait. He's trying his best to eat it. I'm just going to let you have it, then. I'm going to let you have it. You can keep that bait. Look at him. He's got it down in there. You, you fish, you look like me stuffing my face through the holidays. As much as I can fit in my mouth. Okay. Well, let's do this. Since we're catching fish on both the skipjack and the drum, and I've already got this some pieces of this drum cut up, let's just stick another let's stick another fillet of it on there. Don't be talking bad about my my chunks of these fillets here i know it ain't it ain't pretty <laughs> it's getting a job done though by gosh it's catching fish Them scales on that drum buddy they're they're tough i like them drum that are about eight inches up to about you know 10 12 inch range that's the ideal size drum to be able to cut up. Them eight inch, eight to 10 inch makes good live baits too. All right, we got that line going out. Let's land our small blue here on our light tackle rod. Come up in here, fish. Let's see what you've got going on. I think you got that crappie jig any two or where it hooks at there it is give me a hook back there you go well little old thing but it's action man that's what i brought these rods out here for try to try to get us some extra bites that we may not have got otherwise. I mentioned that there 
yesterday when I was filming the, the other raw and uncut video, my big sphere and doing this style of video for the catfish is having a long stretch of time and not catching any fish. You know, oftentimes when I'm set up on a spot, I can go two, three hours sometimes without getting a bite. And if I'm setting up on a place that I know fish are going to be moving through, I don't mind waiting them out because I know it's just a matter of time. But for video purposes, for those of you coming along watching today, I don't think you all want to sit around with me for two or three hours without seeing no fish caught. So I needed to make sure we get us some action. And these slider rods are making it possible here. Letting out some line on this. And, you know, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna run it too far back, cause the water's calm. We're in a kayak, you know. We're not making a lot of noise like a like an aluminum boat does. So this deep of water, it don't. We don't need them real far back. y'all my hands got cold again getting them wet that's why these fish keep biting they want they want me to have cold hands they don't want me feeling my fingers out here we got some more bait we're up to 58 feet now and some smaller fish there that's smaller too but along the bottom there is a school of something probably shad Boy, my hands are cold. I should have brought my heater with me. I got me, uh, my longtime viewers have seen me use a big propane heater. I used to have a 20, uh, one of them tank top heaters that screwed into a, a 20 gallon propane tank. Look right here. Oh, he took it down. He didn't get it. But anyway, I had one of them big set on top, and you'd, you'd have that big propane tank set here. It took up a lot of space, but boy, it'd keep you warm. It'd about melt your line, too, if you got it too close. But uh, it's a lot of weight, and it takes up too much space, you know. But I got me one last year that's a smaller one. It's made for, for cup holders, for like golf carts, and it uses them little... Uh, one pound disposable propane tanks and I built me a mount for it to put on the kayak and everything but I still have yet to try it out I got that thing last year and never used it and today would be a great day to try it and of course it's at the house <laughs> I mean other than it other than the temperature it's a nice day out here it's the wind's barely blowing. It's not causing the, any difficulties fishing. There's nobody on the water. I mean, that one boat that went by will be the only person we see, would be my guess. And we got the place to ourselves out here. We're catching a few fish. If it wasn't for just being miserable cold, it'd be a perfect day. But it is miserable cold. <laughs> You wouldn't have had to twist my arm to stay at the house and watch the old boob tube today. I could have easily been talked into it. But I had that I had that drum from yesterday and I wanted to try out this microphone without plugging it into my camera and I knew the wind's gonna be bad tomorrow, so I him hawed around, talked myself into it. Plus, Daphne, the dog, was annoying the heck out of me this morning, too. So that gave me, that gave me extra motivation to leave. 
She's a good dog, but boy, she'll get on your dang nerves. She's getting to the point now, too, where she's she'll she'll bug you. There's some more bait on the screen right there. She'll bug you to death if you're trying to eat. I used to not give her stuff, like table scrap and stuff. I mean, she'd get treats, dog treats, but I wouldn't give her no. I wasn't giving her no bite of my dinner, you know. But she spent some time at my parents' house. You know, they watch her if I go out of town or on vacation or, you know, sometimes the, if I'm going to be fishing somewhere where I got a, you know, driveways where she's going to be in a crate all day, my my mom will come get her, take her down to their house. And, and they spoil her rotten. I mean, she gets everything. They go on car rides. She gets hamburgers and you know, she, she's living the, the dream down there. And I guess she's got so adapted to the lifestyle down there with them that when she comes home, she thinks it's just, that's how it is everywhere. So she's spoilt rotten. She got some new, she got some new toys there at Christmas. She got some new stuffed babies and she got a football because she had, we like playing football. The nice thing about the 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 way the football is, you know, it's the ends. She can get her mouth on the end of a football, but not on the middle part. So I can actually get it back from her, knock it out of her mouth, and go throw it again. If you try to play a tennis ball with her, she can get the whole thing in her mouth, and she won't drop it for you to throw again. She'll just want you to chase her. Now, my ass is too old to be chasing any dog around, so <laughs> we we go to football, but she had finally punctured her other football got a hole in it and so she got a new one from santa claus i told her santa claus is gonna bring her a lump of coal for how she's acted this year but i guess she lied to him and he believed it so she got on the nice list somehow or another i thought i was gonna throw at that fish but it's gone I took her up to see Santa Claus at the at the one of the vets up there in Knoxville had a get your picture made with Santa Day, and I took her up there and it was a it was a pretty I mean the the Santa guy I mean he was obviously a fake Santa I mean there's no real well I shouldn't say there's no real Santa but you know at the malls and stuff there's no real Santa. For you kids watching out there, the real Santa lives in the North Pole. It's his helpers that come down and do the pictures at the malls and stuff. But this particular helper there that was at the, the vet's office had a fake beard. And uh, Daphne got a bite of it and pulled some of it off. But overall, it was a pretty good operation they were running there as far as the setup goes. But boy, we like to never got the dang pictures from that girl that took them. They had hired some photographer girl to do the pictures and we she took a bunch of different shots and like a week goes by and she finally sends out an email to everybody that went up there and she had put the pictures put one picture of everybody that came up there on her website so we could go download them and so i reached out to her and i was like you took a bunch of extra poses and stuff while we were there if possible i would i'll pay you for those extra poses because this this santa claus picture day was free the vet was putting it on they were just asking for donations to the animal shelter so i gave them 50 bucks for the animal shelter there but i told that photographer girl i'm like look you know if you if you got those extra poses i'll take them i'll pay you for them whatever and i wait and i wait and i wait and she don't respond and I messaged her through email, and I messaged her through their fa her Facebook page. No response. And meanwhile, it's getting closer to Christmas, you know, and I'm like, I'm going to have to do something here. Because it's the one thing every year, my mom, she wants one thing for Christmas. It's pictures. That's it. That's all she ever wants. And she's tough to buy for because 
she don't really have no hobbies. She don't do nothing. She don't go nowhere. It's like, what do you buy somebody like that? But I can always count on getting her pictures. But I could not get these pictures from this photographer girl. I couldn't get in contact with her. Couldn't get her to respond. So I finally reached back out to the vet. And I was like, do you have a way to get in touch with this girl? I'm trying to buy these pictures from her. And they was finally able to get in touch with her. And she said, she told them that she had gotten behind and wanted to put up one picture for everybody that had come up there and was going to do the rest over that particular weekend. And this was like the weekend before Christmas. Well, I wait and wait, you know, and Monday rolls around and the weekend's gone. And I still ain't got them. So I reach back out to the vet. I'm like, have you heard anything? And they're like, well, we got, we got ours. Whoever that person that's running the, the vet's Facebook there had gotten their extra pictures from the girl, but I hadn't got mine. And so I, I, I messaged her again and they reached back out and I was like, look, if all you're having to do, if the holdup is you editing these pictures, I, I, I mean, I can do that my damn self. Just send the dang pictures. I mean, hell, the other one, the other one that she had sent, the original one, it hadn't been like, it hadn't been photoshopped or edited or cropped or anything. I mean, hell, I, I ain't got a lot of computer skills, but I can at least do that stuff. I mean, every, every social media platform out there has got a filter you can slap on something now. So I mean, I, you don't need no professional photographer to do it. I just needed the dang picture. So she finally sent the, just the regular pictures. But it was almost a got one right here on this other piece of drum. I think he may have it. No. Nope. He's back after it though. I can feel him after it. He wants it. Take it, why don't you? Yeah, he's got it in. He's got it in, folks. We got us another one on here. On the drum. So yeah, anyway, we ended up getting the pictures of Daphne and Santa. But I wasn't sure it was gonna happen. I don't know what that girl was doing with her time. It for sure wasn't editing pictures. But you just couldn't get in couldn't get in touch with her. I won't mention her name and blast her on a video like this, but I can I can tell you this, if they run that event next year and I see that she's a photographer, I ain't going. I'm gonna go somewhere else. I ain't I ain't going through all that again. This fish is going through it right now. He's got a hook in his mouth. He thought he had him a free meal. It's another one though that's same size we've been getting. Ain't no been no quality thus far. Come over here, fish. Let's see if we can get you unhooked without getting my hands all wet. You think that's gonna be possible? You gonna allow that? He says nope. He ain't gonna allow it. Come here. Take that bait back there with us too, by gosh. Got it back. Here's y'all another fish. It'd be nice if y'all would reel one of them in for me. And my hands are cold. It'd be nice if we could take turns out here. I'll send that bait back down as is. Tell you what, well that line's letting out a little bit. We're at 54 feet here now, so I'll just make sure we ain't dragging bottom with these baits. Drum getting it done. Let's adjust our screen there too while we're at it. Whoo! I want to catch a big one today, y'all. That's what I need to do. I need a big fish. That'd warm me up quicker than anything. Just a real in a. A golly whopper on my golly whopper rod. 
A lot of yous out there got you some new golly whopper rods for Christmas. Sandy was good to y'all too. It was a a good holiday season there. I appreciate all of yous who made a purchase. It means a lot to me. And these rods, man, I love them. The best kayak catfishing rods. I mean, I granted I'm a little biased since I had a hand in designing them but i love this short handle when i'm sitting down fighting fish i love having that short handle and the fact that i can add an extension piece on so when i am bank fishing i can take my seven foot rod and turn it into an eight foot rod with a surf rod like handle to get more leverage and be able to make longer cast it's nice you know it's a i keep the i keep my extension pieces here i got this little crate behind me i keep my extension pieces in there that way some days y'all know how it is you go out and you 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 go fishing and the wind kicks up on you especially it's like that in the spring here in east Tennessee. you go out in the morning flat calm and by noon it's the wind's ripping you know days like that i'll oftentimes fish like i would normally would in the kayak for a little while and then when the wind kicks up i'll go to shore and cast out well if you got a rod that's suited for kayak fishing with these are the short handles here can't cast very far with them and if you carry another set of rods with you where are you going to put them in the kayak there's no space so when daniel and i was working on designing this rod that was one of the things important to me was have a rod that could be used for multiple applications but not have to carry it not have to have multiple rods you know be able to just have one rod that does it all and so it's a it's really worked out everybody that's everybody that's got them has seemed to share the same sentiment so i appreciate you all all buying that stuff man it means a lot to me helps keep me doing this right here We have 54 feet. It's going to continue to get shallower as we make our way up through here. We're going to we're going to work our way around a little bend here to the left. And there's another hole. We'll, we'll work up shallower, and then there'll be another hole that'll drop down. I think it's I think it's normally like. 58 60 feet at normal pool and obviously the water's down several feet right now for winter drawdown thought that other back rod back here was getting hit here comes a big school there on the, on the screen you can see there that uh, school of shad right there but i don't really see nothing around it or under it Last year, I got them. Here's something. Oh, he wanted it, didn't get it. Last year, I was seeing them big, massive schools of shad in the creeks. And I was finding catfish up, either on top of the school or beside them. And that's when I was hitting them with the jigs with the live scope. And just even just haven't found that yet this year i just you know last year it was in january february that i got on that bite and so you know we're into january here now but just haven't haven't found that kind of bite yet haven't found that kind of those massive schools yet it's just a matter of time especially if it stays cold and our our water temperatures keep dropping just a matter of time. I'm on. I talked yesterday in that last video about this other kayak I'm trying out there at the house. I, I've got me a different kayak and a cheap motor. And for those of you that watch that video, I won't rehash that whole story again. But nevertheless, I had mentioned I was waiting on a part because the 
the trolling motor I had bought for it didn't didn't have them washer clamp pieces on the thumb screws. It was missing those. So I got those off eBay, but I had been waiting forever for them. And they was in the mailbox last night and I got home. So I got those now. So now I'm going to hopefully in the next few days, you know, the wind's supposed to be bad tomorrow, but I'm hoping to get that thing on the water and try it out and see, see how it goes. The part I hate of doing it is having to take the live scope off this kayak because I got it mounted on this pole here to the left to be able to... I can't tell that right there. Is that just... I guess that's just bait fish. I thought that might have been a bigger fish working its way up, but I think it was just some small fish swimming into that school. But I'm going to have to completely take the live scope transducer off the mount I have it on on this kayak and pretty much take that screen and the the the, the process they call it the black box but it's the processor that runs the transducer and the screen I'm going to take it all off and put it in that other kayak just to, to try it out I think that right there is a Look right here. This one's right here under us. He's literally right under the kayak right there. That zero mark is where we're at. This direction's behind us, and this direction's forward. Five foot, ten foot, and so forth and so on. I've got it set out right now looking 65 feet ahead. There was something swimming around on top of that thing. I think that's more just small bait fish there. Sometimes if you get a a little school of small bait fish, but they're packed tightly close together, it can fool you into thinking that it's a a, a, a bigger fish. <laughs> it's actually just a bunch of small fish. I had that happen some last year where I would throw at what I was thinking was a fish and my jig would literally hit that school and then you'd see them all disperse. I'm like, oops, what an actual fish. So far, no snags, knock on wood. That's one thing about my dragon sinkers and my rigs, they don't, they don't get snagged very often. It's pretty rare. There's occasionally you'll come through some brush and eat when that happens, it ain't your sinker that gets snagged. It's the dang hook. It'll, it was, it's pulling through brush. The hook will catch a branch or something. That's usually when you get snagged up with them sinkers, man, they come through everything. I went over there to Kerr Lake in North Carolina for that tournament there last year. I dragged with those rigs all week. Never lost a single one. I mean, they pulled through, covered a bunch of miles over there because I was dragging the whole time. Never lost a single rig. There was some stuff we went over here, some rougher bottom down in this area through here, but we ain't had no issues yet i don't want to jinx it folks you got to be careful about saying what ain't happened when there's still time for it to happen you'll you'll jinx it i sure don't want to jinx it you know what else i'd like to have right now i'd like to have something warm to drink something to warm up my inside i'm not a i'm not a type of person that likes drinking warm beverages like i don't i don't drink coffee at all i'm not into hot chocolate i, I just i've never never been into that but i'd like to have something warm right now kind of hungry too since we're talking about it 
I got me some. Y'all gonna make fun of me for this, but I got me some Chef Boy RD last time I was at the grocery store. Like actual Chef Boy RD, the the noodles and stuff, like we eat when you're a kid. As I had a hanker when I went down there to the Florida Keys, there's a little grocery store near where I stayed called the Trading Post. And it's like an old timey supermarket if you will like if you if you imagine when i've in my mind imagine a supermarket what a supermarket would look like back in the 70s that's basically what the trading post is down there in florida keys so anyway they had a little deli area in this grocery store and one of the things they had available is what i call goulash that's what we call it growing up but it's like macaroni noodles and beef and um, tomato sauce with some like canned tomatoes in it and onions and mushrooms it's really good but anyway i had that down there paid a fortune for it too a little small container like yay big was ten dollars ridiculous but I, I come home and i'm like boy i'd like to have some more of that and there's a frozen stofers it's called i think it's called macaroni and beef maybe i, I maybe what's called but they make some frozen things they're three dollars and something but they're they're not very big you, i need two of them to fill me up but i was thinking the other day i was like you know i bet chef boy rd's got something comparable to it and i got some and well it, chef boy rd ain't how i remember it as a kid <laughs> i used to love that stuff when i was a kid i'd, I'd eat that all the time that and spaghettios I ate a ton of it, but it just ain't, you can't go back in time, folks. It ain't how I remember it. But I got some more at the house there, so that may be what I eat for dinner tonight. I should have, in hindsight, I should have bought one can to try it out. But I thought, well, even if it don't taste like how I want, it'll still be good, so I'll get a few cans. It wasn't one of my best decisions. <laughs> I apologize for sniffling on this camera. It's uh, it gets cold like this. Can't do nothing about it. I'm gonna try not to blow my nose today, though. I'm gonna try real hard not to. Y'all definitely don't want to hear that. You're gonna hear me slurping some water. Though. I get to cotton mouth talking, y'all. Some people ask me. I've had to call in a few times, so I know people are wondering about it. But some people ask me if I talk to myself when I'm not filming a fishing videos. So if I'm just out fishing, am I still talking? The answer is absolutely not. I like my peace and quiet, but these YouTube videos, one of the things I found out early on is if you don't talk to the camera, people either click off or they fast forward and so when i started doing the unedited videos is one of the things i kind of made a conscious effort about was just to try to keep the conversation going best i can which is tough because i'm not the best conversationist in the world <laughs> i'm not to yeah i think this kind of video would be easier if if I had someone with me and I, I mentioned that before how I thought about trying out this unedited concept with a catfish video with having somebody with me, uh, you know, we could be, if it took an hour in between bites, we'd be conversing with each other, It'd be kind of like a podcast, which is, which is one of the things I've had some feedback on from people have told me that. A lot of people oftentimes put these videos on while they're driving or working or whatever and listen to it like a podcast. So I thought if I had a guest with me, I could put a microphone on them and we'd just have a conversation while we, while we, there's my phone going off. Let's see what this, let's see who's messaging me while we're trying to video here. Oh, good. We got, we got my shipping notice there from charter internet i'll talk about that in a minute that'll be another thing we can talk about i had a 
I had a surprise on my internet, but, but, uh, yeah, you know, catfishing, there's oftentimes a lot of setting and waiting. You got a lot of downtime, especially if you're fishing how I normally like to fish for big fish. So if I had somebody with me, it would be more like a true podcast, but you got to get the right person for that. You know, you, you, you need somebody with you that's not going to cuss a lot because a lot of people are offended by that. And you need somebody that's that's not going to say stuff that's going to get them in trouble, either with their jobs or or just blasted on social media, you know. So there's only, there's only a handful. I only have a handful of friends anyway. And most of my friends are pretty vulgar people. So it's not, not like I have a lot of options to choose from as far as getting people on camera. And the other issue for doing that is the way I normally fish you know, I love suspending baits. And so I'll anchor on a spot, or if I'm in this kayak, I'll spot lock, and I'll drop my bait straight down onto a place where I expect either fish to move through or move up onto to feed. And the challenge when you're fishing with somebody else and you're trying to do that is one of us is going to get bit and oftentimes the other one isn't because it's doing that kind of technique it's it's you got to be precise and when you got somebody else with you and they're in their own kayak and you got to have some space between you so you don't get your lines tangled and stuff it's hard to get them close enough oftentimes to be able to catch those fish as they're working through i mean sometimes if you're in a if you're in a tight area, you know, I'm a Buck Perry guy. And Buck Perry, for those of you who don't know, he's kind of known as the godfather of structure fishing. He was a bass fisherman. But his teachings, they're, they can be used on multiple species. A fish is a fish is a fish. They all use structure. And so I've applied his teachings to catfishing. And, and one of the things that he would talk about in his books was what he referred to as the contact point. Now the contact point per Buck Perry is when fish are out in deep water it, periodically throughout the day Buck suggested that fish about twice a day would turn on, become active, and move up onto structure to feed. That first that first what he called the contact point was where they were going to make contact with that structure as this fish makes contact with our bait. He wanted it. I think he got it. He took a he took a bite of it, but he didn't get it. But sometimes when you're on a ledge or a point or you get down in an old or a creek mouth that was here before they made these reservoirs, you're talking about, a, I mean, a small area. And if fish are real active and they pick up on the scent of your, on your bait, or if you got some current and it's kind of dispersing your scent, if they're real active, they'll come get it. Even if you're a little bit off of where you need to be. But if fish are not real active, they're kind of reluctant, if now he's got it now he's got it on there but if you're if you're off by 30 feet sometimes you might as well be off by 30 miles you're just not going to catch fish and I've, I've had that happen a lot there's been days where i've had people with me or you know this has happened to daniel quite a bit too it's you know one of us will be sitting where we need to be and the other person's just watching the person who set up appropriately catch fish while they're just, they don't have anything going on and so that perspective it makes it difficult to have somebody on the video you know having a microphone on them and whatnot it's kind of a it's kind of a one-person game what i do oftentimes and if we was in a boat and 
wasn't going to have rods tangled up well then you could just put the boat over the top of the place you needed but that's not not possible when you got two kayaks side by side we got another cat here another one here that's same size as the other ones it's a dinkity doodah kind of day so far folks come up here fish we'll take that bait back too please and thank you that drum's pretty tough they can't can't rip it off the hook even though you try don't you fish oh get back down there get back down there there he goes i wasn't sure that was going to go back down but he did thankfully let's switch that out it's it ain't got a lot of meat on it there we just we'll put another piece on i think it'd be okay but i'd rather get another piece let me find our let me get this out the way get my get my bag here with the chicken in it i can't believe that chicken ain't got more action i thought for sure We'd be catching them small fish left and right working up this ledge. I can't get this dang hook out of this drum. I mean, you talk about a tough bait, buddy. And we may end up doing, if I can't get this, I may have to take pliers to it. I think that's something. There ain't a fish down there that's going to rip that bait off. Ain't no wonder you can't hardly cut through that stuff. You get a big drum or a big carp, it's tough to cut, man. There we go. Now we now we got it going. Well, I just cut up some just cut up the side meat, really, just some fillets and cut them in pieces here. That's about all I can do with it. Let's run this through. All right. Wash my hand. I'm gonna regret putting my hand out of that water. The cold is more tolerable when your hands ain't wet. When I lose, when I lose feeling in my hands and my feet that's when things get bad for me let up some line on that and i'll tell you my my internet store that's what that phone beeping was i got a message there that my new modem had shipped got me some new internet coming y'all uh i was talking about that well, I've talked about it in a few of these unedited videos, but I'm pretty sure I was talking about it there yesterday. About the file sizes. Even, even if you're filming in 1080 instead of 4K, when you're filming a video three, four hours long, it's a huge file. And it takes forever to upload. At least on the internet that I had anyway. And I had charter internet. I got charter because it's the only internet service in my area. At least it's as far as cable internet goes. Oh, oh. Let's put that back. We got something going on here. We got one on this rod now. Let's reel us in another one. But, uh, Ooh, there's a nice mark too right there. We could have thrown at that one with the jig. See, so anyway, I was saying these file sizes, they, they take hours and hours and hours to get uploaded. And heaven forbid your power flicker or the internet go out during the upload, because then you got to start all over again. And it just takes so dang long. And so... I called Charter today, actually this morning before I left, and I said, is there anything I can do to boost my internet speed? You know, because I just got a new router recently. I thought maybe that would help the calls. 
So we got another small blue here, about the same size. It's a small fish day, folks. Sometimes you gotta take what the river gives you, and today it's giving us small blues. Y'all won't touch that chicken. I wonder if it's, I wonder if it has to do with the technique more than the bait. Because fish this size is normally what you catch on chicken, in my experience. They normally gobble that chicken up. But I wonder if it's because these baits are dragging versus the suspended baits is the reason they're getting hit. Skinny old thing, he got some mud on his head too. We'll send this back out. Back out it goes. So anyway, um, I called Charter. Cause I've tried, I got a new router recently and I'm like, there's gotta be something I can do to get faster internet. It shouldn't take me eight to 10 hours to upload a, a video, you know? And this girl on the phone, she says, let me look at your plan. And she says, oh yeah, we can, we can upgrade your plan here. And uh, she says, she starts going over the plans. There's like a 500 megabyte plan. I think it was megabyte. Meg yeah, meg megabyte. 500 megabyte plan that's gonna add $20 to my bill. Or I can go to a one gigabyte plan for uh, $40 more to my bill. And I'm like, you gotta be kidding. I mean, I already pay $80 a month for internet as it is. I'm like, $80 a month and I, and I wasn't on the best plan already? So anyway, we've, for another $40 a month, I'm gonna be paying $120 for internet now. But I got the one gig plan, which will supposedly triple my speed. It's gonna apparently be uploading at speeds of 35 instead of the 10 I've been getting or less oftentimes. And so that's gonna hopefully speed things along with these larger files, but they, they, can't, they can't do those kind of speeds on the modem that I had. So they're having to send me a, a new modem in the mail. So I'm gonna wait to upload this video until such a time that I get that modem because I want something's after that rod right there, I think. Or we're dragging bottom one. I may be dragging bottom right there. We're 51 feet. I wasn't dragging bottom. Must have been must have been a fish after it. I'm gonna let out a little more line on this one too. We were doing that when the other one hit. But anyway, that new modem's coming and I'm gonna wait to upload this video until I get it to see how it goes. But even on my normal edited videos, I film those in 4K. And so those are, if you get a 30 minute video in 4K, hell the file size on it's really, really big too. So yeah, come to find out, I didn't have the fastest internet possible. I was paying like it's the fastest internet possible. But this is hard to believe. I mean, damn internet costs you $120 a month. That's more than my electric bill. My electric bill normally runs around $100 a month and that's electric and water paying more for internet than I do for electricity. But you know, these, these internet companies, they've almost got a monopoly. I mean, there's multiple internet companies out there, but they all kind of have their own geographic area and you'll, they'll be the only internet company available in that particular town. And so you're stuck going with them. And I've looked into, you know, you get satellite internet and it's, it ain't no good. And you can get, you can, you know, there's that Starlink that's Elon's. Let's throw with that fish right there real quick. But Starlink, 
the upload speeds are really slow on it so that's not going to help me i've missed that fish i've missed him i've missed him by five feet right there looks like he's still sitting there though let's try him again but that's what's most important to me is the upload speeds the download speeds i don't ever download nothing now i have had problem that fish is swimming away now he's going the other way as my jig goes down one of the things that that was a problem was if i was uploading a video to youtube i would have buffering going on on my tv like if i was watching netflix or something the tv would buffer all the time and you couldn't watch stuff in high def on there so this new internet package is supposedly going to help with that allegedly we'll see i thought it was my router but i got that new router and it's still having the same problems so yeah and i thought too i thought when i switched plans they might put me on like some promotional rate or something you know commit to six months a year or whatever and then you get a you get a discount on the price heck no wasn't even a possibility when i first got that internet years ago i've i've lived i got my house in 2006 and so i've i've had charter internet the whole time and when i first got it you had to do a commitment you had to commit for a year and then your your rate would go up and when your when your rate was about to go up you'd get a notice and i'd call and act like i was going to cancel it you know and and then they would extend the promotional rate out a little longer and they did that a few times and then they finally called my bluff on it and you gotta to i i <laughs> i i researched this that's how i know this but snagged right here is that a fish i may be snagged I don't know what was up with that. But uh, at one point in time, because I was wanting that promotional rate so bad, and I was so irritated. I'm like, if you, can, if you can give that rate to new customers, why can't you give it to all customers? You'd think you'd want to do something for the people that's been loyal to you and have used your service for years. They don't give a damn about you though. They just want the new people coming in. They want to lock them into their monopoly. So after they had called my bluff and wasn't going to give me a promotion rate anymore, so I was like, well, let's just cancel the service then. How long do I have to go without internet to be able to qualify as a new customer again? And it, it was like 90 days and so i was like man can i go without internet for 90 days and i finally realized i couldn't so i had to give in but boy if i could have i was almost at the point where i was just gonna tell them heck with it ride it out and then i was gonna be a new customer again and start that whole process over but it just don't make it never made sense to me they offer you them promotional rates to get you in the door and the people that's stuck with you year after year after year, they're like, well, heck with you. We got you now. So yeah, gonna pay me $120 a month to get me some faster internet and it better be faster too, by gosh. I told that girl on the phone, I was like, I wanna make sure before I commit to this that I ain't locked in any specific time because if I'm not getting the faster speeds, I'm going to send you this modem back and go back to using the other. Well, she said I could drop down any time. Everything's got more expensive, though. I mean, especially the past year, but everything's went up. My grocery, my, my food expenses, grocery expenses is 
my biggest living expense. And it's went up about 50%. And I, it ain't like I've changed my diet at all. You know, I ate the same things. But grocery bill in the last year or so, one to two years, has went up 50%. Tell you something else that's went up too. I'm sure some of y'all out there can relate to this. So I got a letter in my mailbox it was before i guess it's sometime december there you know obviously before the new year when the new rates come into effect it was from the insurance company so with youtube obviously you know youtube i'm considered uh, just an independent contractor basically uh, youtube for your ad revenue they send you a 1099 form at the end of the year they don't provide you no benefits or anything like that unless you're an actual employee there at youtube or google or whatever but for just content creators like me there's no no benefits so you got to have your own insurance plan which for me i had had my own insurance plan for years anyway because when i was working as a nurse i was doing travel nursing and all those travel nurse companies they all offer you quote unquote free insurance but it's it's good while you're working <laughs> and as soon as your contract ends you're out of luck your, your insurance stops and you know i'm somebody in between contracts i'd oftentimes take time off i mean that's the perk of being a travel nurse the fact you didn't have to work year round right so i got my own insurance plan years ago just so that i could work when i want to and not have to not have to be beholden to any travel nurse agency because those people are scumbags anyway. So it used to be very cheap when I was younger. But now, so I'm getting a little older, every year I get that letter saying, as of January 1st, we're going to be making these changes to your account. And one of two things happens. Either one, they raise your rate, or two, they raise your out-of-pocket and deductible. And so this year, my rate didn't get changed, but now my deductible went up. I went, I have a high deductible anyway, because I don't ever go to the doctor. I don't have, I don't have any ailments, so the only time I'm going to use this health insurance policy is if something catastrophic happens, like I have a car wreck or something like that, or I get some kind of major illness. Either way, you know that that kind of thing you're you're gonna you're gonna max out that deductible quick here oh that's a nice takedown oh and he's come off too. something took it down hard didn't it let's see if he got her bait but anyway insurance for me is truly just insurance it's insurance against the we had our jig up there around our sinker I don't know if it was the fish that done that or what. Boy, he got it all tangled up. And so, for me, I've never minded having the high deductible because it was only going to be used in catastrophic event. Car wreck, uh, a major illness, some kind of accident. That's the only time I would ever even go to the doctor or hospital or anything but man they're i mean now they've re i went from a five thousand dollar deductible to a seventy five hundred dollar deductible and i went from maximum ten thousand out of pocket to maximum fifteen thousand out of pocket all because I'm getting a little older. Ain't damn thing changed with my health. I'm still, I'm still going strong. Hopefully going to get about, hopefully 50, 60 more years if everything goes according to plan. I'd like to live until I'm, until I ain't able to get around anymore and then die in my sleep. That's how I hope I go. Probably won't work out like that, but that's my plan. 
But boy, in the meantime, boy, their insurance, either going, they're going to stick it to me. So with my deductible and out of pocket going up this year, I'm guessing next year I'm going to get my rate raised. Which right now, I mean, my rate ain't bad, all things considered. Oh, oh we got a fish on right here. We got a fish on. This fish right here, he ain't got no health insurance. He's gonna have to pay out of pocket to get this hook removed out of his mouth. I don't know if this fish can afford my bill either. But my rate, my insurance rate, I only pay $114 a month. So it's not bad. It's just the principle of it. You know, that's what gets me. I got my insurance through Farm Bureau where I do my car insurance and stuff. It's through United Healthcare, but uh, the plan, but the, the uh, insurance through Farm Bureau there, it was much cheaper than going through Marketplace. Marketplace is a joke. Come up here, fish. Let's see if you can pay your copay over here, fish. This fish, he ain't got no, he's going to get his get himself bankrupted over his over his copay ain't no way he can afford for me to take his hook out of him what do you think fish you gonna give me that bait back too he said he'll give me the bait back if i take the hook out for free i think that's a deal i think that's a pretty good deal another dinkity dude off folks it's been that kind of day I'm gonna leave that bait on though, though. I mean, it's still looking, looking good. I've lost track of how many we've caught. We've had a few fish. Just no quality today. The thing that's always got me about our healthcare system is the fact that you can't just you can't just go in and see a price list you know these these hospitals doctors offices they overcharge for everything because the insurance is only going to allow them to insurance is only going to pay so much so the hospitals and doctor's offices overcharge for everything because they're only going to get that maximum amount anyway. Now, if you ain't got insurance, there'll be a private pay amount and they'll usually discount your bill to, you know, to compensate that. But you still, I, you should be able to walk in to a doctor's office or, you know, hospital, you know, obviously emergency, you know, you got to get done what you got to get done. But if it's something elective, if you're going to a uh, doctor's office or if you're having an elective procedure done, it should be a la carte. You should be able to just see how much is anesthesia going to cost? How much is the surgeon going to cost? Um, you know, any follow-up visits that, that you need. You know, it, it should be broken down for you right there you should know in advance it shouldn't be a surprise when you get the bill and see all these numbers that don't mean anything because they're not going to insurance ain't going to reimburse to a certain amount anyway the whole health care system in the united states is just a it's a crock really something needs to be done about it and i don't know what is but that's a big fish right there that's a that's a bigger mark right there about 20 feet out i've got that jig going down if he'll just, if he'll just hold right there for a second, my jig is about to hit him. Oh, I'm right there in his face, man. I'm, I assume that's his face. He was coming that way. And my jig is right there on top of him, it looks like. He's indifferent to it, though. Well, if he sees it, we're, we're moving on by him now. He was completely indifferent to it. That's a big mark, though. He's up a few feet off bottom right there. Yeah, we've gone by him now. 
may not have been a cat who knows i got that jig right on top of it though what it looked like on the screen that's the closest i've landed one cent all day But all of you out there working, either you, you're self-employed or you're independent contractors, y'all know what I'm talking about with the insurance and the medical system today. It's a joke. I mean, your best hope is to just survive until you hit 65 and then you can get on to Medicare. That's about the best you can hope for these days. That's why so many people abuse the ER. Yeah, I worked the ER in my in my nursing days, and man, you get people coming in there treating it like primary care. They come from they come in there for everything because they either can't get in to a primary care or they can't afford the copays. And ER, you know, you can't turn anybody away whether they can pay the bill or not. I mean, you got to see them. So, well. Technically, technically, you have to provide everybody that comes into the ER with a medical screening. Now, I did work at a hospital one time. Somebody comes in for something non-emergent. Nurse practitioner would see them and say, basically, you know, we've we've deemed you to be a you know a non-emergent uh, condition here. We will still gladly take care of you, but we will need the whatever the copay, whatever the amount was that they were going to be due from their insurance up front. And uh, that deterred a lot of that, but most hospitals aren't like that. They're so worried about their patient satisfaction scores, they, don't, they just see everybody, regardless of whether it's a real emergency or not. That's why ERs are backed up all across the country, because most of the crap in there is stuff that should have went somewhere else. That's a rant for another day. Let's see if we can hit this fish right here. He's coming up about 20, 25 feet out. Now he's going off the screen. There's my jig down. I ain't had no luck hitting. I've, I don't know how many casts I've made now. Probably between 10 and 20 casts. We ain't got a nary fish on that jig. I only got, I don't know how many casts I made yesterday, but I only got two fish on it. Both of them were a fun time, though. This goose feather going by right here. One of them old Canadian geese lost a feather. I think some places it's illegal to pick up feathers. That may have been a lie, I was told, but like if you found a bird feathers, like eagle feathers or something like that, it was illegal to have them. I don't know, don't quote me on that. I don't know if that's true or not, but I'd heard that somewhere once upon a time. I don't know what you do with feathers anyway, unless you're making some craft project. They called them, uh, oh, what are them things called? You see them at flea markets all the time. Dream weavers, dream catchers. They'd have feathers on them. Dream weavers. I think dream catcher, I think is what it is. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Them things people buy at flea markets. I ain't been to a flea market in a few years. Used to go get some plants there. The Mexicans had set up at a, there and they could, you could go buy plants a lot cheaper than what you get them to, at the store, at the nurseries. Back when I was growing garden all the time, I used to start some of my stuff from seeds, but things like peppers and whatnot, I'd buy them. This coming year, I'm putting out a, this fall, I made a, this past fall, I made me a raised bed garden. 
I'm gonna end up selling my tiller this spring and I'm gonna do some plants in a in a raised bed. I got a load of dirt brought in back there in the fall to fill in some holes in my yard and I had enough to fill up most of that uh, raised bed garden and then I'm gonna have some as we get closer to spring before I plant anything I'm gonna have some compost brought in and top off that garden mix it up with the with the dirt I'd had some it was sifted topsoils what I'd had brought in so I'm gonna mix all that up I had put down when I made that garden and I know most of y'all don't give a damn about this, but you know, this is the type of thing. If, if we were out here fishing together, by God, you're going to be hearing about this stuff. But when I made that garden, the raised bed garden anyway, I put down a layer of old wood to start. I had some old wood over there that I used to burn in the fire pit. It was about rotted. I put that down. Then I put some dirt. Then I put a layer of leaves. Then I put some more dirt. And so now we'll put some compost on top of that and mix it all in and hopefully have us some good tomatoes and peppers and cucumbers this coming spring and summer. I didn't put out a garden last year or the year before because I was pissed off at my neighbors. I was still, I was still upset with them. I don't like them. My garden was on that side of the house and you know, it used to be a go out there work in the garden. It was kind of a, it was kind of a peaceful time, if you will. I'd go out there, and even though it's work, you're you're, you're hoeing weeds and stuff. It's it's enjoyable work. I used to like it, but now I go out there and I, I look at my trashy neighbors, and it just ain't it wasn't enjoyable anymore. So I didn't put out a garden last year or year before. I uh, made me a, a raised bed. I could have moved the garden to a different part of the yard, but my soil, my ground around my house is very rocky. And that section that I had made into a garden over there, I had tilled it so many times, so many years, that I had I about got all them rocks cleared out over there. And if I move to a different part of the yard, I'm going to have to start all over, getting them rocks out again. And then the other thing, too, is that part, that part of the yard, there's a water spigot on that side of the house so I could easily water stuff. If I move it somewhere else, another part of the yard, I'm going to have to carry water over to, to water it and stuff. So. I'm just going to leave it over there on that side, have the raised bed. I'm not putting out a bunch of stuff this coming year. I'm just going to do, a, you know, two or three tomato plants and a few peppers and a few cucumbers and just the stuff I eat, basically. Is that When I put out a big garden, I'd throw most of it away or give it away. Yeah, you can't eat all that stuff. So this year is going to be different, by gosh. But I'm gonna sell that till I'm waiting to the spring to sell my tiller because it'd be it's worth a lot more in spring when people are actively doing their gardens. Selling a tiller right now is like trying to sell a kayak right now. It's just there ain't as much demand for it. So I'm gonna wait to do that, but that'll open up some more space on my my shed. I moved, I used to keep the tiller under the carport. But I got a new mower back in the fall. I got me a big uh, Skag Zero Turn mower. And so now I can't fit the mower in my shed. It's, it's too wide. So I had to move the mower to the carport. So I move the tiller to my shed. And so that'll free up some space if I get rid of it. Look at all them fish right there. Up there. They're about 20 feet deep. They're about... 30, 45 feet out. They're swimming off now. I don't know what them were. Could have been a bait, but they were. They had some distance between them. They gone now, though. But I tell you what, though, y'all, I really like that zero-turn mower. I had me a 
John Deere riding mower for years. That's what I've mowed my yard with. And I got about three, about three acres that I mow. And that John Deere riding mower, I mean, it would take me, it'd take a long time to mow my yard. But this zero turn, man, it's fast. I not only save time just from the extra speed of the mower, but being able to turn quicker really, really cuts down on the mowing time too. So I, I was using it. I got it. Mowing season is pretty well over by the time I got to mower, but I've used it to mulch up leaves several times this fall. Look here. He just let it go again. Boy, it's hard time. When you got fish so small, they can't get that six aught size hook and a piece of chicken. It's hard times. But yeah, that mower, it's fast. It's comfortable. I sold my, my John, it about had it. I, I needed a new mower. It was on its last days. My, my yard's so dang rough. It just beat you to death out there. And, so I waited till the fall and got a deal on that skag there in the season deal. It's a commercial grade mower, so the frame of it's more heavy duty. Should handle the bumps in my yard a little better than the right. Of course, that John Deere riding mower, I mean, it's it lasted me a long time. I think I got it in, I think it was... 2013 or 2014. So, I mean, it made it about 10 years. I mean, I did maintenance and stuff on it and had to replace some parts here and there, but overall, it was a pretty good mower. It was on its last days. I put it on Marketplace and a fella come and got it. And, and uh, you know, I told him, I was like, you know, you might want to might want to baby this thing and best you can get some extra use out of it and he is he had bought a new property and he said there was all kinds of stuff in his new yard it was overgrown and everything he said he just wanted to get an old mower he didn't have to worry about damaging because he wasn't gonna have no money in it to get that place cut down and so i was like well this is the mower for you then by gosh and i guess it worked out i never heard from him anymore Marketplace is weird, though. It's, well, I mean, it killed off. Used to, you sold, you sold something or you wanted to buy something used, you went to Craigslist. I honest, I don't even know if Craigslist exists now or not. It, it may be completely done. Everything's on Marketplace now, but it just, it amazes me. If you got something for sale you will get these people message you and they will say, is this item still available? And you respond back instantly saying, yes, I still have it. You never hear from them again. And it's like, you know, it's not like you waited hours to respond and they found something else, a better deal or something. Like when you message them back instantly and you never hear from them again, it's like, why? Why did they message you to begin with? Why waste their time and yours? And the other thing in that, the other side of the coin, this happened to me when I was looking for a trolling motor to buy for this new kayak I got there at the house for this live scope project. You know, there's all kinds of trolling motors on Marketplace, you know, $50, $60, because I was just going to get me one of them little hand steer transom mount motors, right? So it's all kinds of them on there, 50 60 bucks, 100 bucks. Before I got the one that I did, I had messaged like four people and said, hey, I'm interested in your motor. And I wasn't like trying to knock them down on price or anything. I'm like, hey, I'm interested in your motor. When are you available? You would get no response. I, I never did get a response from any of those people. The only one that responded back was the guy I finally bought this, the motor that I got from something happening here on this rod something's after it but i'm like why are you gonna list something for sale 
you got people interested in it and then don't respond to them. I just don't understand people, y'all. I don't get it. I just... I just think cut out to be social. Me sitting out here on the water talking to you all through a camera. This is the extent of my my social abilities. <laughs> I mean, this, this is this is as good as it gets for me. That fish right there, man, he's trying everything in the world to rip that bait off the hook. You think he's got it possibly? Maybe he's just small. I think he does have it. Let's reel in another one. He's just a small fish. I thought he had, I thought he was just sitting down there nipping him, picking at it, trying to get him. He had it. He's gonna, this may be the smallest one of the day. I don't know what it takes to get a big fish out here today. Look at this. How did he even get that hook? This fish, and you know, and this fish right here would be a prime candidate to eat that chicken. This is the type of fish that I normally would get if I'm the days that I would put out a chicken. I can't get that hook out of you. There you go, buddy. Tiny, tiny fish. Let's uh, let's send that bait back out. You get back down there, fish. You go on now. Yeah, let's, let's put that bait back out. I could switch it out, but I think it's okay. It looks okay. I got my hands wet over here on that fish, y'all. I'm gonna don't let me forget to click that bail over. I'm gonna set on my hands a minute here. <laughs> Try to kill them. Warm back up. Your hands get wet and the air hits it. It makes them cold. Don't let me forget to turn that bail back over though. We'll be, we'll be, I've done that before. You forget to turn the bell over and you look back and you're, all your lines going off the, off the spool. You're just hanging on right there at the very bottom of it. Yeah, marketplace is weird, man. People are weird. I ain't cut out for it. I can talk on camera, but I find it difficult to talk to people in real life. Myself and the dog, that's about all the, that's about the extent of my social abilities. It's better that way, really. Just these lines here. I can't believe, I mean, the suspended baits, those smaller, especially with the size of the fish that we're catching today. I can't believe they're not all over that chicken as we're going by. I mean, we're going, my baits that are dragging, I'm gonna keep letting out a little bit more line here, but my baits that are dragging, they're basically on the same path, if you will, of the suspended baits. These suspended baits, they're just coming, they're reaching the fish after these baits up front have already gone by. So we've went right over the top of these fish with those pieces of chicken and they ain't having nothing of it, but they're all over them dragon baits. I think it has to just be the technique. I, I wouldn't be surprised if the fish that we've caught that maybe some of them have been down in the mud because we've we've caught so many now that have just that have had mud up their sides and back that sinker going down through there going right by them stirring it up or whatever we may be getting some reaction bites as it goes by them whereas these suspended baits if those fish are down in the mud those suspended baits going right over top of them they don't even know it because we are going against the current and granted the current is it's minimal out here today they were i looked at the, the generation schedule before i left the house it was like twelve thousand cfs and this far i'm a long ways from the dam so it's it, it, 
you'd barely and it's barely noticeable at all might as well not even have any current so it's not like we got a scent trail going or anything like that but it's weird how many more if if you had told me i was going to come out and catch this many dinks i would have told you it, i would have bet you money it would have been on the chicken not the our other baits i'm gonna flip that bail over now let's see if we can throw at this fish he's still a long ways off in front of us oh, he's going out of the screen well, there's one up there let me stop it on that one that one's swimming away all right let me keep dropping it down come on fish come back into the window there come back in the screen I think my jigs okay there's my jig I see my jig I don't see the fish anymore oh man I see the jig not the fish it's another decent looking mark yeah I don't know if it's catfish or not fishing at these depths i need a heavier i should have tied on a heavier jig today that, that bucktail jig right there i think it's it might be a half ounce maybe three eighths or half I'm trying to hit these fish that are down 30 feet deep there i really need like a one ounce to get it down there quicker before before either I move by or the fish swims by. Yeah, this style of video here though, folks, it's one of those, today's one of them days that if I was doing a normal edited video, I don't know that I'd even post today. You know, this unedited here where I'm really, you know, looking for kind of numbers of fish. My edited videos, there's kind of a, I almost feel like there's an expectation with my viewers that if I don't have at least one good quality fish, I almost hate to post a video on an edited trip because I think there's just, I've caught so many big fish in the past on video i think there's an expectation people just expect it of me every single video and unfortunately it just don't well it don't work like that some days you go out and you you catch small fish sometimes you don't catch any fish at all i ain't gonna post any kind of video that's a skunk video but if i was editing a video from today's trip i probably wouldn't y'all hear that bald eagle over there his voice is carrying. I don't know if he got on the microphone or not. But yeah, I'd probably just scrap it if I was doing a normal video day. But this unedited where you're kind of just coming on a, a real fishing trip with me, just like we were out here sharing a boat together, it just is what it is. You know, whatever we get is what we get. So I will probably will go ahead and post this. Plus, I want to see the file size on my new internet. And I want to see if I can get this microphone, audio from the microphone to my camera without me plugging it into the camera. I got a lot of things I'm wanting to experiment with today. And this time of year is the time to do it. I talked about that there yesterday. Uh, January and February is always my lowest viewed months on YouTube. It just ain't a big demand this time of year for kayak fishing videos. So it's a great time for me to be able to try out new equipment, try out new things, set up new kayaks, stuff like that. Because if I try something new and it bombs and I don't get any views or I mess up the content, don't get a video, whatever, it ain't a big deal. Versus spring and summer months, it kind of hits you in the wallet if you don't. If you, if you go out a day and you and you mess up your footage or something so it's a good time of year to be trying stuff 
just be nice if it's a little bit warmer while I was trying. I'm cold, y'all. The more I've set out here, the colder I've got. And I tell you what my biggest mistake today was before I come out, I was playing with Daphne out there in the yard trying to run her a little bit because I feel a little guilty putting her in the, in, in the crate while I go fishing. And I can't trust her to leave her out because if I leave her out in the house, she's spiteful. She'll pee and poop in the floor and she'll chew something up. If I leave her outside, she'll dig out from under the fence and I'll be getting a call from my neighbor and I'll have to leave the water and go get her. That's been there and done that. So she has to go in a crate while I'm gone. And I feel a little guilty about it. So I was playing with her out in the yard before I left. And you playing with her, you running around a little bit. You got all these clothes on. You, you, you work up a little sweat. You're per perspiring a little bit. And then... You do that and you get in the car and you drive over here and you're a little bit damp on your on your insides there, on the inside of your clothes, and you get out here in the cold and that dampness turns cold. Makes things makes things colder on you. Some of y'all out there right now though, you sitting somewhere warm, you in your house warm. You, you're driving a truck and you're warm. You're sipping on hot chocolate and just laughing at me out here catching these dang small fish and freezing cold. Right there, I wasn't even looking at that screen. Right there's something under us. Let's drop that thing right down. I'd love to bust one on a jig today. I just don't know if it's going to happen. It's taken half a year to get down there, doggone it. I gotta get a heavier jig for these. I don't think I got any with me though, unfortunately. I think I took them out of the kayak back in the summer. I gotta put them back in. I'd had a variety of sizes last winter. Fish still down there. All right, there goes my jig down. That's some small fish that's passing by. Man, that thing is just sitting there. Okay, there's my jig about to hit him. Different to it. It's working, I think. Man, I'm right there. It's moving by him now. I think what I thought was a small, some small bait fish up top was actually a fish. I suck at this, y'all. <laughs> I never said I was any good at it. I envy those guys that are got the live scopes on their boats and they see crappie up in the water all the time. And oh, we got a, we got one over here. Oh, he let it go. They see them crappie up there, high in the water column, and they're sitting there just motionless, and they put that jig down and thump. I really man i don't i just don't see crappie like that out here most of the time when you you see bigger marks on the screen most of the time they're moving they're swimming so it's hard to it's hard to put a bait right in their face the fish i got yesterday on the on the jig with the live scope they were I just basically got lucky, made a good cast, and put it right on them. 
and got the bites. I missed a bunch yesterday too. I miss I miss a lot more than what I could ever hit. <laughs> That's for sure. It was like that last year too, but I was doing it so frequently last year in the winter that after a few trips I was, you know, it's like it's practice. You know, I was getting better, I was getting more accurate. But I ain't done this in a while and yesterday was my first time doing it in a few months, so I I was I'm rusty. I gotta get back in the the rhythm. I'll get there eventually. Give me a few more weeks, I'll be a lot more accurate. I just ain't there yet. We just need them schools of shad to stack up in the in the backwaters what we need. And they may be in some of the creeks, but the ones that one I was at yesterday they just wasn't they just wasn't in there thick. And even the bait we've seen out here today, there's not been just massive schools. It's not been like that. But that bird flying by over, he could tell me where some bait's at, that old heron. And things, professional fishermen right there, they, they gotta eat to live. That's something about being a bird. You know, as humans, we've kind of got it made with our lifestyle in a sense that, you know, these birds, for instance, they have to go out every single day. They're starting, they're starting brand new on the day, just having to find every meal they eat. Their whole day is consumed by trying to find something to eat. Whereas us, humans, well, at least in this country anyway, most people, you've got a refrigerator. You've got access to a fast food restaurants. You know, food is readily available for us. You know, we, we've got houses and there's houses and apartments and stuff. You've got shelter. You're not having to constantly build a new nest or like these birds are and stuff it's a, we've, we've kind of got it made but and but the other sense of that is that these birds almost have a a freedom about them really that there's they have one thing to do the only responsibility that they have is just find their next meal that's it that's their only care in the world except for mating season Outside of outside of that, they just got one track minds, just find something to eat. Whereas humans, we got it made on getting stuff to eat, but we get bogged down with everything else. All the other crap that distracts us from what's important, we, we dwell on that and all the drama and the chaos of life stuff that don't really matter at the end of the day. That's what we spend all our time focusing on, spend all our energy on. Those birds ain't like that, though. But if I could trade places with a bird, I wouldn't. It'd be nice to fly like a bird one time. I mean, I'd want to do it with wings. I ain't like jumping out of no airplane, no parachute. I ain't doing that. I ain't going to be doing no bungee jumping, nothing extreme. But if I could turn into a bird for like an hour and just fly around, that'd be pretty cool. I don't know if they've ever... Yes, you know, we don't know. We assume that animals don't have a superior brain like we do. Speaking of superior, look at that fish right there coming in about 35 feet out, about 40 something feet down. I'll never hit him with that jig. Take me an hour to get it down there to him. Let's throw at that one though that's about 20 feet out. I've went way over it. Is that is that one there? Is that a I think that may be some smaller. Let's just drop keep dropping it on down. There's a school of bait down there and he's close to it and I'm about to land that jig close to, on top of him it's going to go to 
He's swimming away. I'm coming in behind him. Well, if this jig had got down there, I had it on the right path. I just didn't get down there quick enough. But we assume these animals, birds and dogs and cats and horses and all this stuff, we assume that their brains aren't as good as ours. Like they don't have the ability to, to reason or, you know, just doesn't, doesn't function on the same level as us humans do. We assume that. Nobody really knows. You know, we don't know how smart these animals are, what what they're able to perceive, how, what, what, what level of thinking they're able to actually do. Nobody really knows. It's one of the mysteries of life to me. So what, when, when I pass by one of these birds over here on the shore with them herons, and they're just looking at you. And you're having a staring contest. You're staring a heron right in the eye. You're thinking about it, and it's thinking about you. Like, what is it thinking? Is it just blank in there? Who knows? These, these birds could be some of the most developed thinkers in the history of the world, and we'd never know it. They don't have a way to communicate with us, unless it's one of them parrots that learns how to talk. Mystery of the universe, y'all. It's the kind of it's the kind of thing you think about when you're freezing to death, catching small fish. <laughs> That's the kind of nonsense that we have succumbed to today. Been a little while too. I feel like since we got a fish, maybe it feels longer. You know, it's funny. Yesterday, and it was cold yesterday too, but it wasn't as cold as today. But yesterday, I felt like, and I said this on the video, I was like, man, it feels like the day has flown by. Like, I filmed for, I think it was a little over four hours, and it didn't feel like it was that long. But today, where are we at on the camera here now? We're two and a half hours or so. And it feels, I guess because I'm just so damn cold, it feels so much... Like, it's been so much longer than that. <laughs> it's something about being cold. Let's see what time it is here. It's 4.09. We got a little over an hour of daylight left. I don't know if I'm going to make it or not. If I caught a big fish, it'd probably motivate me. But these small fish and just ain't getting it done for me to... I definitely ain't gonna be out here till dark, that's for sure. Oh, oh, speaking of fish, we got us another one. Good timing, fish. Just working up this ledge here. I ain't following no specific path, just kinda working my way up through here. We're 50 feet deep here now. Got the other hole up here around the bend. I don't know if we're going to get to it or not. Before I, before I skedaddle out of here. I think this fish here is probably going to be another blue that is probably going to be comparable size. To everyone that we have gotten thus far, and he is. Let me get my other rod here out the way. These fish want nothing to do with that pieces of chicken on the suspended bait. Yesterday the action was coming on the chicken. Today just ain't having it. But the drum has got it done for us. No, don't get that line all tangled up and wrapped up around you, fish. You old devil, you. Give me a hook back. Pull 
Boy, that hook's in there good. Come on, give it back now. There it is. Well, that right there is probably the biggest, biggest dink in a, he's probably comparable to the biggest dink of the day. But it has been a dinkity doo -dah kind of day. And I got my hands wet again. <laughs> I could have done without that. I almost hope we don't get any more fish that size so I don't have to get my hands wet. What do you think? You want to leave that bait on? You want to switch it out? Let's switch it out. For no more longer than we've got to fish out here. Let's switch it out and put on a new piece. If I can get it off the hook. I'm telling you, man, that stuff is tough. There we go. Okay. Yeah, this drum here, I mean, you get, it's a pain in the butt to cut up. But if you were in an area where you were getting just dink tap nonstop, it's a good bait to put on because they're not going to be able to rip it off the hook very easy. I have been known to cut up some catfish too for the same, same reason. Because it's you cut up a catfish and their skin is very tough. It's hard to rip off the hook. I don't do very good on catching catfish on catfish, but I have. I have caught them on it before. When bait's tough, you do what you gotta do. But I mean, if you had bet me money today, coming out, if you told me I don't know how many dinks we got, but if you add them up and you said, you told me beforehand, this is the size of the fish you're going to catch and this is how many, I'd have bet you money that most of them had come on the chicken. And that has not been the case at all. Don't let me forget to turn that bail over a minute. I'm sitting on my hands right now, y'all. But, you know, that's one of the things with, sometimes I, I kind of get, I'm bad about this. I like catching fish on a suspended bait. Like that's, I mean, that's just my favorite way of fishing. And sometimes I kind of get stubborn about it because I like doing it so much. I get to a point where I'm like, even if I'm going to catch less fish, I'd rather catch less fish and have more fun with the fish I do get than to catch more fish doing a technique that I don't enjoy as much. So sometimes I kind of get stubborn. But it is good to mix up your techniques because there are going to be times and, and days where you have like this where fish show a clear preference to either one type of technique or one type of bait, one cut of bait. And stuff like that, you just don't know until you until you try. And out here today, I mean, who knows if if I didn't have these baits dragging off the back, if I was suspending four rods, who knows what would happen? Maybe we catch fish, maybe we don't. If we wasn't catching no fish, though, I'd be at the house right now. <laughs> if we had, if I had gone for two hours out here today and hadn't got a bite I'd have lost motivation I can keep motivated when it's warm but not when it's cold the one big advantage this time of year though is all them people that's in the ski boats wakeboarders, houseboats. They just disappear this time of year. They all about that lake life in the summer. 
boy when it turns cold they ain't nowhere to be found and that's nice i don't miss them i don't miss them one bit flip that bell over now we should be good I was looking at them jet skis down there when I went to Florida well we said that rod there just got hit just flipped the bell over something got after it Ain't got on that apparently. But I was down there in Florida. I was looking at them jet skis again. So it was uh, either last year or the year before I was down there in Florida. And I had this guy come up on a jet ski. I was in kayak. He come up on jet ski and he offered me some bait. And I was looking at his jet ski. And man, that thing, it was it was rigged out i mean he had he had a, a big cooler on there he had a live well on there uh, man he had rod holders i mean it was i'm gonna throw it this fish right here his jet ski was legit i mean it was a fishing machine and i had looked in and things there sea makes a fishing jet ski I mean, they got the ability to hook up a live well. I mean, everything. Anything you'd want on there. Boy, we put that, we put that jig close to that fish. Didn't get his attention, though. Now it's swung back to me. I'm about, I'm, we're going to reel this in. I'm going to settle my hands again. I almost hate to... I come out here looking forward to casting to some of these fish but my hands are so dang cold i don't even want to i don't i don't want to take them out of my butt cheeks here to make a cast but those jet skis i you know i'd seen that other guy down there in florida a year or two back and i i looked at them and uh i forget the official it's sea dew that makes them but they've got this model that you can hook up a live well and everything to and while i was down there in florida i seen some of them again and it got me thinking about it I was like, man that i hate jet skis with passion but i have to admit it'd be pretty cool to have one of them fishing jet skis so i mean you could i mean if i was out there down there in florida with them jet skis you could cover so much water you could run out to them uh to them rigs and the reefs and stuff and it'd be awesome I don't know. I ain't, I ain't never actually been on jet skis. So I don't know how comfortable they'd be to sit on all day long. But that one that Sea Dew makes, it's got a big deck in the back, so like you can you can stand on it and fish, or you can, you know you got your cooler back there, your live bait tank, whatever. I mean that, that one that fella had was huge. them things i don't even know with the jet ski what kind of maintenance you got to do on them things that, that'd be my fear even if i had a even if i had a boat down there and in the ocean is you, you make a run a few miles offshore and you have a problem you know you get some your motor breaks down something goes wrong you know that would be my fear the things get real bad in the ocean real quick. If a storm blows up on you. I mean, yeah, you can use the radio and call a Coast Guard or, you know, ask for help, but a storm rolls up on you real quick. Things can get bad in a hurry. I'd I'd be fearful. I don't I don't worry about it being in the kayak because I'm not going that far away in the kayak. You know, I'm I'm within a mile or two of wherever I launch at on the kayak. Here's one on this side now. Oh, he come free. I felt him let go. Well, we know he didn't rip that drum off the hook. 
that thing ain't that bait ain't going nowhere <laughs> Yeah, he's gone now. Just the tease. But yeah, I don't worry about that kind of stuff in, in the kayak because I just ain't going far enough away. But I know if I had one of them jet skis or I had a boat down there in Florida, I'd be making a run to them out there to them reefs and stuff. And yeah, you know, that I'd. That's how it would be. That, that's when something's going to go wrong when you're a long ways away. At one place I put in down there this time, I hadn't ever fished there before, but it was called uh, either Bahia or Bahia Honda. And I had had several comments on my videos from last year's trip to the Keys of people telling me I should go there, that there were some big sharks that hung out there around that bridge and the Bahia Honda, Bahia, Bahia however you pronounce it, tomato, toma tomato, tomato type thing. So I went down there and the current, I mean, I the current was just ripping through there. I mean, the current going between them bridges was, it was fast. I mean, I was having to pedal just continuously to to hold position, and I only hooked one shark. I fished that area one day, and I hooked one shark, and he somehow or another straightened out a circle hook. Now, how that hook straightened, I don't. It should have broke, but it straightened, and he come off, and I was well. I left. Well, I was exhausted when I left there that day. But I was kind of thankful that I didn't hook into something big that would have towed me out because I'd have had to pedal back against that current. And there was one point I'd got my line snagged on the bridge that I was trying to, the current's going this way and the bridge is over here. And so I was trying to go along the, the bridge, you know, best I could, but I was having to angle the kayak because the current kept sweeping me down. And my line got, got caught on one of the bridge columns and got snagged and I had to go back and try to try to pull it free and I got swept through under the bridge when I did and man I I was pedaling as hard as I could to get back and I made it back to the other side but like <laughs> I was I wasn't making very much progress and so I, I, that was just I don't know what it really was about that area I mean there's current and there's current through all of them bridges down there between the islands, you know, and it and it changes directions depending on which way the the tide is going. But for whatever reason, that one particular bridge, the current was just much stronger, way stronger than any of the other places I fished down there. But allegedly, there's a lot of big sharks in that area. I just took that one though. Never got a good look at him. Don't know what kind it was. I assume it was maybe a black tip because he was thrashing on the surface. But I don't know that to be certain. Just couldn't couldn't ever get a good look at him. And when I was reviewing the footage, every time that fish was up, that shark was up thrashing, my hand was in the way of the camera. So I couldn't get a good look at it. I did get some bull sharks down there. I got I got that one bull shark on the video, and I, I'd made a deal with myself. I was going to film two days, and then the rest of the week I was going to take for me. Just no cameras, just go fishing. So I got some more. I, I, I didn't get anything big, but I got some more smaller sharks after that. Did, didn't get any. No hammerheads, unfortunately. That's the one thing I wanted down there was get another hammerhead. I got one last year. And uh, I had hoped to get another one this year, but no such luck. Didn't see them. I didn't see a lot of sharks this year compared to last year. Like last year, I mean, you'd just be pedaling along and you would see them. And this year, it was 
they just didn't seem to be at least where i was at anyway there didn't seem to be as many there i don't know why that is could have just been timing or bad luck whatever you know i just didn't see as many this year somebody's over on that i thought that was an island over there but there's somebody over there on it They've been over there listening to me talk, y'all. You know I hate talking on camera when there's people around. And out here a day like today, you know how sound carries across water. I bet you they've heard every word I've told you. And I don't mind them. If they were watching the video, I wouldn't mind them hearing me talk. But the fact that I'm just talking to a camera weirds me out. They're so far away, though. They probably just think I'm talking on the phone. And why it doesn't bother me for people to see or hear me talking on the phone, but yet it does to a camera. I don't know why that is either, but it does. There's another, that's a bigger school of shad right there on the screen there. They're 40 feet down. 49 feet of water here. Maybe we're going to get up here to... Maybe there'll be some fish around that. Now that we're getting up here on some bait. They is, they better come on, because we're about to we're about to get it the heck out of here. I'm cold. And they some microwavable chef boy RD at the house it will warm up my insides. <laughs> chef boy RD. I wonder if that was a real person. A real person or just a, a brand name. If it was, if Chef Boy RD is a real person, I hope he's getting some kind of. Well, he's he's probably dead by now because I mean, heck, he was he was old. He was an older looking man on them spaghetti jars when I was a kid, and that was forty years ago. So he's probably long gone. But I hope his kinfolk are getting a a royalty on his name for putting him on them spaghetti cans if he was a real person that person on that island over there is yelling at their dog their dog behaves about as good as Daphne does I can't let Daphne off a leash like that when we go somewhere I'd never get her back she don't listen to me. It's like that when she gets out of my fence at the house, too. My neighbor up the road has to basically trap her on his porch. He's got a locking gate on his porch, and he gets her up there playing with his dogs, and then that gate locks behind her, and I'm able to go up there and get her. But otherwise, I can't get her back. She just don't listen to me. I don't know how to break her of that, either. You scold her, if you yell at her, it just makes it worse. If I, my, my other dog, Roscoe, back in his life, when we would go somewhere, we, I'd take him to a park or go play disc golf or something. If there wasn't people around, I'd take him off the leash, just let him run around. and He'd pee on trees and sniff on everything. And if we were on a walking trail and there were some people coming up i'd holler at him and he'd come over to me and we'd put him back on the leash until the people went by and i'd let him go again but daphne ain't no way she'd be jumping all over people or even worse there'd be a bicycle go by and she'd go try to knock them down chasing them down like she does me where we we play with the bicycles at my house all the time we ain't riding bicycle very much right now i'll tell you that because you get some speed going in this cold weather my eyes start watering you can't see where i'm going we just we just kicking the football around out there right now hopefully it'll warm up soon I mean, hopefully we have a a short winter we ain't had no snow here yet thankfully Hopefully we don't. 
I think snow's pretty. I like to see it for about a day, but then I'm over it. I don't want no, don't want no snow for a long period of time. Definitely don't want no ice. Let's see what time it is here. 4.31. Ain't been that long since I looked last time. I tell you, man, it's when you're cold, time just time just crawls when you're cold. That's the way to extend life is be cold. Maybe that's why them people in them places that are cold weather, maybe that's why they live longer. Everything just slows down. I still got a pretty good way, pretty good ways to go to get back to the car too. I had made a a run to get down here. Okay, here we go. He wants it. Take it, buddy. Well, he hit it. He ain't got it now though. Another one trying to rip that drum off. I hadn't reeled that drum in to check it there after that last fish had hit it, but I knew it was such a tough bait, it wasn't going nowhere. Clearly it hadn't with that fish hitting. But you know, overall though, man, it's been dead out here today. As far as activity, I mean, we saw that one heron go by, we heard that one bald eagle. There ain't been nothing splashing out here. Ain't been no birds working. We've seen a few fish on the screen go by. There's something right there. I don't know if that's a fish or if that's a, some small bait fish that are bunched up tight, but it just ain't been a, it ain't been a super active day. I mean, we've caught several fish now. It's just been small blues. Definitely a day that wouldn't have made it to video had I been doing an edited, normal edited video trip type thing. Definitely wouldn't have done it. But hopefully, those of you that have, there might be two or three of you still left watching to this point in the video, hopefully you all can talk that fish right there into eating that thing and hopefully you've had a good time today coming out here fishing with me you know my again my goal with these videos is to take you on a fishing trip a real fishing trip not a highlight trip not a something edited down bring you out here let you see it all start to finish all the fish caught anything crazy that happens anything that goes wrong just like you were out here with me. That's my goal anyway. There's a lot of people, I mean, I, and I've gotten feedback from this on the ultralight videos. There's a lot of people that just seem to like these type videos because well, it's, it's a way for them to kind of go fishing in, in a sense because maybe they can't go for either health reasons or job or family commitments or you know whatever it's um they can kind of come along with me and I, I try to well I hell I try to talk to you as if you're actually here because <laughs> I mean you know, I can't I can't talk to myself like that so I try to talk to you through the camera like I'd talk to you if we were in person tell you the same stories that you don't want to hear about my internet and my health insurance premiums. <laughs> exactly what you want to hear when you go fishing, right? Yeah, I think that right there is some bait fish bunched up. I don't know if it's going to happen. Oh, I'm really cold. <laughs> I'm just, it's miserable. I'd be tolerating it okay. I think if I was catching 
either more fish or catching bigger fish. But this sporadic bite for these dinks, I mean, don't get me wrong, if it was 70 degrees, I'd be kicked back, relaxed out here right now. But it ain't. I don't know what that sound was. Something sounded like something blew up over behind us. <laughs> Old Daphne the dog, she'll be I get home today. I put her uh, she's got a bone. One of them like I think it, it, I, I assume it's some kind of plastic, you know, but it's one of them chew toys, basically, like a chew bone. Not like a rawhide or anything, but like a bone she can chew on. She chews a lot. When I get home, I'll let her out of that crate, and she'll be prancing around, and she'll run out of that crate full speed, and then she'll turn around and run right back in it and grab her bone, and then come back out. Now we got one right here. Oh, my gosh. Did that, he come free, too. Well, just the tease, another another tease like one of them ladies at the Mouse's Ear Gentlemen's Club. About to get me excited for a second. Yeah, Daphne will be. She'll be happy to get out of that crate. One thing about these short trips here during the winter, though, she ain't in there very long. <laughs> I don't fish real long trips anymore anyway. I just, the older I get, the less I can, less time I can spend sitting in a kayak. I just ain't got it in me anymore. So most of my trips are usually four to six hours anyway but this time of year it's more days like today it's three to four hours instead of the four to six let's throw at this thing right here by gosh looks like he's swimming this way i think that might be a fish versus well i've missed him Now he's going off the screen. Let's see if I can find him. I'm going to toss it down right there just for doo doos and giggles. I don't see him on the screen now. I lost him. Okay, all right. All right. I see my jig and I see close to where he was. Well, I hate that I ain't busted a single one today. Not a single one on the on the jig. I was living high on the hog yesterday after getting two. I thought if I see some today, I'll have got me a day's practice in there yesterday and really, really get them today. I ain't hardly been able to land the cl uh, cast anywhere near them. Some days you got it, some days you don't, folks. Four forty. <clears throat> Well, folks, again, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just, I'm a pansy in the colds what I am. It's miserable cold out here. And again, I should have brought a coat with me, but I don't like wearing a coat. It's too cumbersome. It's too, you just, you can't move around and stuff. Now, I should have definitely brought my, my heater. I need to try that thing. Got that thing last year, built a mount for it and everything. Didn't bring it, but I'm cold, y'all. I think I'm going to go to the house. 
let Daphne out. I'm gonna heat up some Chef Boy RD that I ate for dinner. Probably fill out some more Facebook copyright claims tonight to try to get rid of them imposter pages on there. Them damn things just keep popping up. So it's, it's ridiculous. But uh, y'all, thanks. If you've come along with me, we're three hours into this on this video here. If you've come along with me today and stuck it out with me through this miserable cold and these small fish, I appreciate you. Appreciate you doing this and you know leave me some comments down there in the comment box some feedback with you know I filmed that other unedited catfish video yesterday which yeah obviously hasn't posted yet by the time I'm filming this so haven't gotten the feedback from it as far as best camera position for this style of video whether it's chest or up there in the front camera mount didn't catch any fish today front camera worthy but uh you know be interested to hear about that or if the concept just sucks you know obviously it's popular with the ultralight videos it's got a lot of viewers on that and you know my most my most viewed videos of last year was those videos so that concept is popular is it going to be well received with the catfishing versus the ultralight fishing i don't know so Y'all let me know whether you like it or you don't. Don't matter to me. I mean, y'all drive the bus. If you like it, we keep doing it. If not, when I go catfishing, we'll just do the edited videos. Don't matter to me either way. You know, I'm just trying to trying to, trying to, to make as many people happy as possible, and you can't ever please anybody. So I'll tell you what I am going to do, though. I'm going to please myself when I get the heck out of here and get in my car and turn the heater on full blast and start thawing out my hands and my feet. So I'm getting out of here, y'all. I'm going to reel these baits up. I'm going to take it to the house. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.